Good evening and welcome to TIO Stadium for round nine of the NTFL Men's Premier League with the sixth place Wanderers up against the second placed Southern Districts. In the commentary box this evening, myself, Matt Hepworth, Ricky Nolan and Rob Cross. Um, Ricky, we might start with you. Southern Districts look pretty good on paper. A couple of big inclusions with the likes of Ed Barlow uh, and the return of Pierce Little. Yeah, when Ed Barlow plays, they usually win. But uh, mm. yeah, last time these two sides met, it was a draw out of Southern Districts. A good effort by... Wanderers, a bit of a shock there, I thought uh, Districts could have the line that day, but it uh, just shows they've got, they've got a bit going for them. Wanderers to win out there at Districts, so we should have another close game hopefully today, although I do reckon uh, Districts got a pretty strong side in, and Wanderers do have a few players out. Mm, Rob Cross. Body language is anything, Matty and Rick. I've watched um, the Crocodiles players run off the ground to the bench, run to position, and the Wanderers players just wandered into position. I'll tell you a story there. One day before a grand final, Wanderers players were turning up about 20 minutes before a game. I thought, oh, we got, could have this one yeah. in the bag. And they went out, come out and beat us. So <laughs> I do. And I've yeah. actually spoken to Charlie King a lot about uh, what the way Wanderers prepare as a football club. So do not lead anything into the way the muck well, mucks prepare. They so don't have far to come. You look at where their clubhouse <laughs> is right opposite TIO Stadium. Wanderers got 10 goals then. I had a very good conversation with Charlie King about that one day. We, uh, we laughed a lot, actually. <laughs> So in the ruck, Scott Meyer, who was tremendous in that draw out at Fred's pass, leaps high. Owen oh, Skender probably won the tap, going hard. And in the middle, Braden McLean, who played in defence last week in the towards zero round, had the zero on his back. All the skippers did in 24 today. Might be interesting. I've never seen Braden play in the middle. I've seen him on a wing, but in the middle, it'll be interesting to see how he goes. Very good football. Is he the man to Mark Barlow, do you think? Maybe. As the Wanderers come out of the middle. And a little pokey kick has found Joel Cabillo up towards centre half forward. He's the dangerous O'Connell. He could be a real spark for Wanderers. Kicks in towards the pocket. Is a beautiful kick. And a nice mark has been taken out on the lead by Mark White. He's 55 from goal. Right half forward flank. Oh, sells a bit of candy around Ogden. Then thumps it towards goal. Won't quite have the carry. At the back of the pack, Charlie McAdam will see it out of bounds. It's kept in. No, it's not out of bounds. Left forward pocket. A bit of skill by Mark White. I can remember... Watching and playing against his father, who's a pre Wanderers Premiership player, he was an absolute gun. Nearly won a Nichols medal one year. So he just showed a few traits of his father there. Great to see Liam Jarrah back today in the 28 for the yellow of the Wanderers. Richard Tambling, former AFL player as well, gets it away out to Horbury. There's Barlow, another ex-AFL player, just skirting around the boundary line. He receives it now. He was tackled, got his handball away. Kick now by the Crocs up to the wing, Josiah Farrah. And Josiah Farrah breaks away, did well, onto the right boot, pokes a little kick up towards half forward. Coming out on the bounce is Damien Williams, the former Buffalo. Goes by hand back to Josiah Farrah. It's good teamwork here by the Crocs. They've got players in good position, and it comes into the hands of Tambling at right half forward. First game, isn't it, for the year, Richard Tambling? He kicks in the McLaughlin direction, but it's spoiled away vigorously by Dylan Dos Santos for the Wanderers out of bounds right half forward. I think he's had a few games uh, in there at Div 1, Richard, but I think this is his first game at, uh, at senior senior level. Also back Pierce Little after that long suspension. Riley Owen Skender, Meyer from behind for Wanderers, won the tap. And Bo O'Connell's got busy early, breaks away from half back for the Wanderers, kicks up towards half forward, lovely spearing ball. The mark drop though, off the chest, he gathers neatly there, Jobaston Priest controls it well. He's got a teammate out wide there in, I think it's McCurry Parryman. He does well and squares it, so they go direct in the Jara direction. He's from behind. He goes to ground. Well done by Tom Holman coming out from fullback for the Crocs. Holman gathers and handballs 25 metres up to Keenan Dingo. He's about to be wrapped up by McCurry Parryman. Squeezes it out to a teammate in Tambling. Comes back to Keenan Dingo. And Dingo's short pass hits the chest there of the big ruckman in Riley Owen Skender. A couple of early touches, Richard Tambling. Some of his confidence up. Motlop in front. Williams came hard from behind for the Crocs. Poor handball from Wietra, unusual from him. Warwick Williams paddles it along towards the boundary. Now Wietra mops up, looks for his teammate there in Motlop, but the ball is out of bounds at left half forward for the Crocs, about 70 metres around from their goal. Just uh, Wietra's efforts at second effort, he's an absolute gun. Probably the premier defender of the last 10 years, or maybe of all time. I know that's a big call, but that's how highly I rate him with John Anstead. So. And not that tall, is he, Rick? No, he's not. 5'10", 11? Yeah, no, he's not that tall, but God, he can play. Plays on much bigger men most weeks. That's a clever tap on there by Davin Hall for the Crocs. Comes to Charlie McAdam. He pokes a kick inside 
Centre half forward. Josiah wow. Farrow, a good mark against a couple of Wanderers. I thought it should have been paid. It might be now. It's a late whistle, but the mark has been paid to Josiah Farrow. No, not paid. It's a ball. It's strong umpire in there. So the umpire thought it was touched. He stuck with his decision. Sometimes umpires try to, or players try to con the umpire, but very good umpiring. So Meyer and Owen Skinder kicked out of defence by the Wanderers, only as far as Ogden. He's got a player. I'm not sure why he didn't go to him in the first place. He's now <laughs> getting a good bit of a gobble from his teammate in Horbury, and he's turned it over. Odd decision. His teammate was all, all alone there, further down the wing at half forward. He wanted to go inboard instead, and the ball is in the Wanderers' hands. Up towards half forward, in front of the pack there. Big fly from Jabaston Priest. Might have had a game or two at uh, the Crocs, I think, Rick, potentially. And Tiwi as well, I think he's been. And as Ogden sees it out of bound for the Crocs. Crocs, Tiwi, and it might have been Palmas. I think he's been at three clubs, actually. We're in a more clubs than Slim Dusty. Well, if you're a priest, I guess it's good to share the love. <laughs> <laughs> right half forward. Meyer does some heavy bullocking work against Corbett. Comes down there to Pemberton for the Crocs. Now the ever-reliable left foot of Michael Bowden looks for Davin Hall. He's got Drake Thompson for company. Thompson pushes along in front of himself and comes backwards into Colley. Colley's low, worm-burning pass. Wasn't terrific, but they might mop up here. Watch out, Barlow's coming pretty hard. Ball comes back in towards centre half forward for the Wanderers. Still a chance through Meyer. Meyer dishes off to his teammate there, and Dylan Dos Santos comes in the Jarra direction. Here's the superstar, the former demon. The high flying forward has got it 30 metres out directly in front for the first score of the night, five minutes into the quarter. Not a bad kick by Dylan Dos Santos. Hit him, uh, hit him lace out. That was a very nice pass. And uh, Liam Jarra just had to mark it on the chest. and is usually an extremely reliable kick of goal. Such an exciting player. Great to see him back in the NTFL. Mm. Lovely strike of the footy. The first goal goes to the Wanderers. They lead by six, five minutes and a little bit gone in the first quarter of the TIO Round 9 match from TIO Stadium. So he play the, uh, I think it was his first match. I thought he was pretty serviceable. A few people said he wasn't as fit as he normally is, but he just straightened them up and I think he kicked five or six that day. So he just gives him a target to kick to and uh, he's still got his footy smarts to know what to do with it. So it be interesting to see how he goes again today. Nice little resume, Liam Jarrah, uh, Melbourne's leading goal kicker in 2011, uh, mark of the year in 2020, uh, 2010, AFL Rising Star nominee 2009. So really good scoop there for Wanderers. Corbett up against Meyer. Meyer wins the tap. Collie. Squeezes the handball back to Meyer. He's got a runner outside. Maybe that's where Wanderers can exploit the Crocs through their pace. Looking for Jarrah again. Well done by Holman. Worked Jarrah off the footy. He's got support in Bowden. Socket through towards the goal square. Almost rushed through, but Ogden there grabs on the last line of the fence. Kicks it out to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Straight down the throat of Collie, who's been busy. Collie kicks towards centre half. 40. wants Meyer. Well done, Josiah Farah. Floated in from the side courageously and took a strong mark. And an opportunity perhaps goes begging for Wanderers. Out to Schwartz. Star young players. You know, he sends it out to his teammate there in Duffy, who carries it down the outer wing. He's got his teammate in Joshua out at right half forward. Joshua is low pass in towards half forward. Numbers there with Dylan Dos Santos again. His high kick back towards the wing for the Wanderers. Will pitch, will it stay in? Bowden comes out at hard, can't keep it in play. See, uh, Devon Hall, he played me playing for districts about four years ago. He uh, hit the NTFL scene on fire. I played the first half of the year. I think he's from, might be Nooker. It's pretty hard to get to once it starts getting into town, once it starts raining, or it's very expensive to charter planes and that. So, not sure where he's living now, but yeah, four years ago, he hit the NTFL scene on fire. He comes back up towards half back and running back with the flight courageously, where there was Keenan Dingo. He sends it back into the centre of Tio Stadium. Wanting Josiah Farrah. Horbury's there. By hand back to McAdam. Pokes on over the top to Bowden, who's drifted down from half back. Drake Thompson comes the other way and meets the footy. Keeps it in front of himself. He's got a teammate there for support. Bowden ties him up superbly. Hall gets involved and it bobbles back to Bowden. Well played. He's kept in the contest and kicks up to Will Farrah. Can't quite complete the mark. He had Weitra for company and Weitra just worried him out of it. Here's a star battle. Weitra v Barlow. Well done by Weitra. Did he disguise it well enough? He did. Out of bounds. Right half forward for the Crocs. We're going to star battles. You've got uh, the Premier probably full forward. Taken Darren Ewing. Didn't play a lot of NTFL footy. But the Premier full forward and Will Farrah. 
think that's the premier defender in uh, in Darren Weitra. Meyer and Corbett. Corbett holds front position, spinning through the pack there. It was Nick Sedgwick who did well for the Wanderers. He's out towards the boundary line. Going hard at it again was Luke Dyer. Interesting player, Rick. Number 32 for the Wanderers. Yeah, he's uh, from Linden now. So he's captained them for about the last five years. He's won five best and fairest in his league. So he must be able to play a little bit. And Loyal stayed there his whole time. So good pick up. Always good to have a captain and a leader. It'll be very good for Shannon Motlop. Enjoying this ruck battle. Meyer wins it this time. Strong player coming out from centre half forward there was the Wanderers player in Cabillo. Up inside attacking 50. Here's an opportunity now for Jabaston Priest. Well, he looks good for a big man. Pokes the kick. He's got a teammate on here. Can he gather? That's who's his teammate there. That's Jordan Jeffrey. Of course, Joel not playing today. Collie taken down in a strong tackle and well played. Good tackling by Tambling wins a free he kick. He started really well, Richie Tambling. They're going to be great for his confidence. He pokes one down to the big ruckman there in Riley Owen Skender. Who will drop some mark he probably should have taken. Opens the door here for the Wanderers. Fighting hard is Keelan Fijo. Poking it off the ground is Pierce Little. Josiah Farrah mops up at ground level. Fighting hard also is Cade Stevens there for the Wanderers. It's intense here. The Wanderers are standing up to the bigger bodied Crocs. Sort of funny, the Crocs this year, they've had Mark Joma, absolute gun, all Australian ruckman, and Seb Gillis the last couple of years. They haven't really flown in a ruckman or found a ruckman that's moved up here this season yet. Cade Stevens, Wanderers, giving Scott Meyer a bit of a chop out at the moment. Tambling squeezes a kick through. Joshua went running towards it. Motlop as well. Off the ground goes Wietra, but only as far as Bo Schwartz. Traps it neatly, and he kicks it out towards the wing. They could be away here, the Crocs. Found his teammate there in Horbury. He nicely delivers up towards half forward and Will Farrah. Farrah's kick in towards the pocket, and Barlow's pinpoint right on the boundary line. And Barlow is 45 metres out. He plays on quickly. Hooks the kick around. Is that the levering, levelling score? Is it touched on the line? I think it might be a goal. Wanderers want it touched. They're not going to get it. Well played by Barlow. Well played by Farah. And scores a level. The 10-minute mark of the first quarter. A goal apiece. Fairly good goal by the ex-AFL Sydney Swans player. Played 26 games with the Sydney Swans. But took a grab and swung around in his right and kicked a very good goal. But I reckon when he plays, he's one of the best players in the competition, this bloke. And... Uh, He's a midfielder that's about six foot six. So, see here, this is a great goal. We've been wanting to uh, see him this season for a while. I know he's been like listed on that Thursday um, uh, when their team sheets come out on a Thursday, but then often doesn't actually follow through to play on the weekend. So it's exciting to actually see him back playing tonight. Yeah, I've heard he's only going to play about fifty percent of games. Okay. Has he had hammy troubles potentially? No, I think he's just getting a bit old. I think he's just watching the body. I think. Yeah. Play on through Tambling, out to Dylan McLaughlin, and Ray, away he goes through the centre, and a lovely spearing ball in towards full forward. Williams couldn't take the mark. Well done by Warwick Williams to knock it away from him. Working hard is Davin Hall. Whistle's blown, and it's going to the Wanderers in the last line of defence through Warwick Williams. Warwick Williams' closing speed then was, uh, was really, really well done. Lovely kick by Wietra, finds Brendan Motlop. Brendan Mollop, his father Paul, probably Wanderers' greatest ever coach, or with Bully Abala, he's certainly up there. An unbelievable coach, Paul Motlop. He has done wonderful things with uh, the Wanderers for football. Kick to a two on two battle, and in the end, the ball spilled off hands. Jordan Jeffrey, number 12 there, son of the secure great Russell. Out of Joel, who may be destined for bigger things, but Jordan's got a good size as well. Yeah, he has, and Joel Jeffrey's spending a week with the Gold Coast Suns this week. He flies out tomorrow, so that's why he's not playing today, and he's been on fire. When, when I saw he wasn't playing, I really thought districts would be favourites going into this game. Wanderers are standing up pretty well so far. The kick comes in the Barlow direction. Unipingo coming the other way. Here's Matthew Motlop. Bobbles off shins, though. Comes to Josiah Farah. Can Schwartz pick it up? He can. He's got Barlow again. He mops up. Back on the right boot. Another hook around the corner. And Mark in the goal score to Farah. And another goal. Well played. Repays the favour, Barlow. He had the goal set up by Farah on the first occasion, and he's the one that sent it onto the chest of his teammate and skipper there for two goals to the Crocs. They now lead by six points. 13 minutes gone, set first quarter. A little bit, a bit touch critical, I reckon they were a bit lucky to get away with that one. Bo Schwartz's handball didn't hit the target. And uh, you'll see here, just a bit few fumbles, didn't hit the target to still score from us, probably because Barlow's just a superstar, got the ball to, uh, to William Farah and uh, kicked the goal. And last time these two teams met was a draw back in round two, and so far the game's looking pretty even again today as well, gentlemen. So we get a close one right through the match. 
is the last five minutes pretty much all been the crocs good start by wanderers had to get back in the contest through a goal would be nice scooped up here by the acting ruckman in Cade stevens up towards jara he got rid of his opponent then couldn't complete the mark and ogden is happy to rush it through for the crocs for the first behind of the night the fast play out it comes to corbett and away they go through mclaughlin and come back through the middle if he wants to he finds little and his kick is scrappy, but it still might come off for the Crocs. Out to McAdam, he's 45 from goal. Pokes a little kick into the pocket. Excellent ball, and Schwartz comes out and marks on his chest. Well, they kicked one there a while ago. And Schwartz is a pretty good shot at goal, so let's see what he does here. Only three goals in about three minutes for the Crocs. He's looking. He's capable goal kicker, though. Oh, he <laughs> runs around Dylan Dos Santos and he kicks a wonderful goal. Well picked, Ricky Nolan. He was on a tight angle, maybe a little too far out. Didn't fancy chances, perhaps, from that distance, but he liked his chances about running around the man on the mark. He did that and then kicked a goal on the run for the Crocs third. They lead by 11 points. Yeah, if he's uh, if one of his uh, strengths of a skill set, it's certainly that he enjoys a goal. He's got good goal sense. You saw there, he probably thought he was looking around. I'm not going to be able to make the distance. It'll probably be touched on the line. Needed to buy a few metres, so he went to the candy shop. It's probably not uncoincidental that Scott Meyer has been off the bench in the last four minutes or so. Kate Stevens doing the ruck work, and it's the Crocs have kicked three goals in that time. So back in the middle, Corbett up against Stevens. Corbett wins the tap. Wanderers need a steady in goal. A quick kick up towards right half forward. Good strong contest by Ogden. Picked up here nicely by White. Comes back to Jeffrey. Hooks the kick around. Jara creates a contest with Holman. But only as far as Ogden, who's kicking in the Barlow direction. Awkward bounce for him. Dylan Dos Santos overruns the foot in, comes back to Barlow, who plays on quickly. Squirts the kick in towards centre half forward. Corbett's all alone. He gathers, then fumbles. Warwick Williams for Wanderers coming the other way. Slaps it along in front of himself to Sedgwick. And Sedgwick bursts away from half back. Kicks towards Jarrah at centre half forward. Well done by Holman. Some hanging on going on both ways. So the umpire said, play on the call. Diving after the footy at ground level there is Duffy. He's still under it now. It's squeezed out. A Crocs player dived on top of the football in. It'll have to be fed out. He might be penalised. The umpire comes in and says, I'll have it. Just on the other side of the pack, the ball had come out. The whistle had blown. Corbett, just a few minutes ago, he just can't fumble the footy. He's fumbled mm. the footy there away. Lucky for the Wanderers. They're just getting into space at the moment. Josiah Farrah, who's been busy, kicks up in the Will Farrah direction. He marks streaming away from Wietra. Long way out from goal, though. 70 metres, left half forward in front of the Morris Rioli grandstand. So he kicks towards the goal square. Unipingu there, stretches and takes a nice mark for the Wanderers in defence. Ed Barlow was screaming for that ball before. Josiah so Farrow, I reckon he'd be leading their best and fairest from here to Tennant Creek, wouldn't he? God, I haven't watched every district's game, but every game I've watched, he's easily been in their top two players, I reckon. Possessing the ball, but they're only a few metres out from the goal they're defending, the Wanderers. Brenton Motlop in the end looks for Scott Meyer back on the ground. He's forced to spoil in the end because Corbett had done well to work his way to the front. The number's now favouring the Crocs. Comes to Josiah Farrow, that man again, Rick. He pokes the kick to Charles McAdam. It's all Crocs at the moment. Danger signs for Wanderers. 19, or should say 17 minutes gone in the first quarter. Margin is 11 points. But the play is very much on the Crocs' terms. Gone wide, but they just controlled the ball by foot. So instead of just bombing away, I know they, they have gone wide, and you could be a little bit, bit critical of that, but controlled the ball well by foot. And they've kicked uh, all their other goals from here, so I can't see why they can't kick this one. Lon Logden's helping himself to a shot in the last line of defence. Logden had a breakout the year in their premiership year. I just don't think he's captured that form again. It'd be good if he could get back to that form between now and the end of the season. Set it just to the left of the left-hand goal post and let it swing and he's kicked it right across the face and out of bounds on the full so the margin stays 11 points rob you touched on it in the opening um uh, minutes of the game about the uh, the, uh, the crocs just look like that a little bit faster and wanderers coming in and wandering and i think that it looks like that's the advantage at the moment as well southern district just look a lot faster when chasing the ball the 50 meter penalty that will help now there's a bit of energy in the wanderers side as they stream back into position Wanted to take advantage of his 50-metre penalty. 18 minutes gone first quarter. 
TIO NTFL round nine. And turnover, O'Connell spilt it. Comes to Josiah Farah. He steps around a couple. Gets onto his trusty left boot. It's all Crocs at centre half for Davin Hall stretch. Got it on the second attempt. He can go in towards the pocket. Balks around Dwitra and then has a shot on goal. Vacant goal square and it just drifts across the face through from behind the margin straight two goals. Just a little bit earlier in the call, he's got some tricks, Davin Hall. Good footballer when he's up and about. Wanderers, uncertain in the last line of defence of which way to go. Comes out to Bo O'Connell. Much better value through the middle of the ground, but he's gone all the way back into the right back pocket. And O'Connell kicks up towards the half back flank. Big fly from Josiah Farah. Farah's had it about 10 times this quarter, Rick. Yeah, he's, uh, he really impressed me at Thunder. I thought his attitude was second to none. And. Uh, Usually when you've got good attitude, you play good footy and it, and it also carries on to the next season. So it's all because of his mindset, I reckon. And He's been, I reckon, District's easily the best player this season. Got it off to Will Farrow, got it off to Davin Hall. And there's another shot from his left, half-forward flank. From about 40 metres out, his shot is not going to quite carry the distance. To the back of the pack, Schwartz gets there first. It's dribbled out of bounds for a boundary throwing. They've dominated really the last 10 minutes of play, Districts. They probably could have kicked a couple more because yeah, the ball just hasn't away. gone past uh, Wanderers' half forward yeah. line. They've just, well, they've just had, had in their, their forward half the whole time, Districts. Meyer, odd tap. He tapped it back into the corridor. Quick snap by Josiah Farah, and that's a well-deserved goal. So the Crocs get a fourth. Closing in on quarter time, it's Southern District 4-1-25, breaking away now from the Wanderers, 1-1-7. Yeah, probably as you said, I reckon that's possession number 11. He's been on fire, Josiah Farrow. So, work from a uh, stobby to you, a bit of a Gary Ablett around the corner, and he's uh, a bit buddy funking with that left foot, and he's uh, kicked a goal, but played a lot at fullback for NT Thunder this year, watched a lot of the games pretty closely, and I, I wouldn't say fullback's his position, but his head was always high, and he gave it an absolute crack, and uh, I thought he, you know, he's probably better off a, off a half-back flank for his size, but I just thought he kept battling, battling, and battling, and uh, his form, his good form has led into the NTFL season as well, and his good attitude, I should say. It's hard to tell which way the breeze is blowing. For a period, I thought it was blowing to the airport end, the end to which the Wanderers were kicking. Lovely tap by Meyer. This might set them alight. Comes back to Meyer. Sweeps the ball forward to Luke Dyer. Here's the Lindenau skipper to Bo O'Connell. He's had to backtrack because he had no one further forward. He's conceded 20 metres. The kick comes in from Braden McLean. Looking for his teammate there at centre-half forward in Jabaston Priest as the Crocs clear it out of bounds on the full. So an opportunity here for the Wanderers. 21 minutes gone in the first quarter. You're watching Aboriginal TV Channel 4's coverage of the NTFL season where it's all Southern Districts at the moment. 4-1-25, leading the Wanderers 1-1-7. Into Dyer, he's 60 out from goal. Long ball, but the Crocs are there in numbers and they swarm over the footy. And they can send it out of defence through Ogden. Ogden's kick to the outer side. One-on-one -on -one contest out there. Joshua does superbly well against Braden McLean. Held front spot and tumbling mark at right half back. Got pretty cool here, hasn't he? He does. Joshua's low pass. He's a cool kick too. He kicks to Josiah Farah, who handballs to Barlow. And the Crocs are away again. Nice kick to Smith. To Bowden. Bowden's low pass to Tambling. Is it on the bounce? Can't control it. Might not have been Tambling. Still going. Now it's Tambling. His quick snap on goal. Have they got five? No. Weitra, last line of defence, couldn't take the mark. And that's symptomatic of where the Wanderers' quarter has gone. He's gone to ground and it's off hands for a behind. And he's looking pretty ginger. It's just too easy to move the ball from one end of the ground to the other there. Wanderers. They've got to cut the exit off. They've got to cut that 45 kick. It's just too easy to attack when you're able to go through the centre like that. At least push them wide push him into a slow play but that was just too easy for a, to get a forward entry from their D50. That'd be a huge blow. Weitra is still down behind the goals. I reckon he might have rolled his ankle. He's running yeah. back with a flight trying to take the mark. He fell awkwardly, dropped the mark. It went through for the behind and he's only just up now and hobbling. That would not be good news. Braden McLean has got a man free in Collie. 
Collie's kick in the Jarrah direction. They might have time for a goal here. Jarrah tries to step around his opponent there in Dingo. Here's a handball back to Collie. They're still 60 from goal. Well played by the Crocs defence. Pushed them away from the Ford 50 zone. And at quarter time, the Crocs lead by 19 points. 4-2, plays 1-1. We're here for when the heavens open and the winds howl. We're here for when the water just won't stop. We're here for the wet and we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Mother Nature can be frighteningly predictable in the Territory this time of year. Heavy rains and damaging winds can cause significant problems and disruption, particularly if you're unprepared, while down power lines and flash flooding can be lethal. To ensure you're ready, visit powerwater.com.au forward slash safety or text safety to 0428 323 991 for more information. Because staying safe and ready around Mother Nature should be second nature. CFS Schoolwear is the perfect choice for quality custom-made school uniforms. Ideal clothing for all school-related activities, whether it's 50 or 500 students, we have what you need. Contact the Cricket and Football Shop NT for your free CFS Schoolwear quote today. Let's see. Roma, Verona? Perhaps Barcelona. Make your dream holiday a reality. Book your next getaway at Flight Centre with interest-free holidays and flexible repayment options. Best in the year. And everywhere. Flight Centre. Intersport, new concept store now opening Casuarina Square. Come in and check out a world-class shopping experience. Dedicated sports zones. Now stocking only the biggest brands in tennis, tennis. Cricket. cricket, fitness from treadmills to benches, boxing, boxing. Swimming. swimming, darts, pool and table tennis. For awesome service and advice, Come and see it. still locally owned and operated, the all-new Intersport concept store. Now open at Casuarina Square. Boys, we've got a real big problem. It belongs to you, it belongs to me, it belongs to everybody. I'm talking about family violence. It's time we said no more to family violence. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. We've all got to say no more to family violence. No more! Family violence is a community problem and it needs a community response from all of us and sport is a big part of that. But we can all do our bit by being more respectful to each other. Please make this year the year we say no more to family violence. You are one of almost 140,000 people living in an area at risk of being affected by a cyclone this wet season. In your cyclone kit, you will need a battery operated radio and torch with spare batteries, enough food and at least 10 litres of water per person to sustain you and your family for 72 hours or more. Remember, all important documentation such as passports, photos and insurance policies should be kept in a safe and waterproof place. Be prepared this wet season. Brought to you by TIO. So here's everything you need to know about the Great Air Race in 30 seconds or less. A hundred years ago, there was a race from London to Darwin by aeroplane. And mates, this was only 20 years after the first aeroplane flew just 37 metres. The winning plane, a Vickers Vimy, was flown by Australian brothers Ross and Keith Smith and their mechanics Wally Shires and Jim Bennett. This was the birth of international air travel and they landed in Parap. There's a park there now. Some people reckon their flight was almost as significant as the Apollo missions 50 years later. Some of the places they landed had never even seen an aeroplane before. This year, a guy called Michael Smith, who isn't related to the other Smiths, is retracing the exact flight 100 years on. The Great Air Race, what a great territory story. Yeah, 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 I know, it was longer than 30 seconds. There's just too much to fit in.
Quarter time here at TIO Stadium, Crocs versus Wanderers, and it's all going Southern District's way. 4-2-26, leading the Eagles 1-1-7. Matt Hepworth, Ricky Nolan, and Rob Cross with you. Um, gentlemen, of course, all going the Crocs way, but the big talking point towards the end of that quarter, uh, Daniel Wietra uh, injured uh, right in the goal square there and uh, needed two people to be helped hobbled off, Ricky. Yeah, I always say when you couldn't wait bear on the ankle, so I always say when you can't wait bear, it's usually about a three-week injury, so it's not wow. good news. I don't think we'll see him again tonight. Um, yeah, they were a bit lucky, Wanderers, to still be in this. The district's played a lot better footy, and uh, probably the Crocs could have put them away. Especially without now, they haven't got their best player. So, so it's apparently it's his left ankle. One of he did at Thunder. Ah, uh, really didn't look very good. So he won't be back. I wouldn't have thought. Huge blow. They trail by 19 points. Meyer is beaten by Corbett. He was their big star in the draw against the Crocs at Fred's Pass in round two. And Corbett stood up to him and beat that ruck contest. And it comes to Josiah Farah in the Barlow direction. So Jeffrey for company. It's Jordan Jeffrey, and the ball goes out of bounds. Huge task now. With their star player, Wietra, off. Have to throw players around a bit. Jeffrey started it across centre half forward. He's now in defence against Ed Barlow, one of the stars of the competition. Tambling. Quick ball to boot. Kicks it towards centre half forward. Comes back in the Josiah Farrow direction. Pokes a little kick on the bounce. Wants a teammate, won't find one. And so here's an opportunity for Braden McLean, the Wanderers skipper. Up towards the wing, but a poor kick and a turnover. And Joshua Marks. Neat pass. Smith. Zach Smith's high kick inside attacking 50. Will Farrow might have got nudged under it by Unipingu, and the umpire's right there. And Will Farrow will win a free kick. There's one I reckon Will. He's the last 12 months, I reckon he's missed a lot of these easy set shots. He's the one who's just got to go back, make sure he nails them. I reckon he's moving a lot better than he has for the last, for probably 24 months now. Uh, had a lot of groin problems, but uh, he just needs to kick these simple goal, regulated goals at full forward. Short kick that he did kick when he kicked when he kicked the 100 goals about four years ago. For his second goal of the night, he's got that regulation goal, and then lets Unipinga know all about it. And that's a huge blow for the Crocs because without Weitra, they've had to juggle that defence around, and maybe Will Farah is set for a big haul tonight. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's uh, it does uh, you do have to restructure when you lose your best player. Yeah, the, it's good that Smith just got the ball in long. Just puts the defenders under pressure. Will certainly let the umpire know what was going on. And uh, he got the free kick and good start to the second quarter. 17 goals for the season so far. Will Farrow, another two to his name tonight. So if you talk about that 100 haul, if he has a few big games, I think round one, Rob, we saw uh, someone picked up a bag of 12. Yeah, got the Adam Sambona. That's right, yeah. I haven't seen him much since then. No. He's had some uh, injury troubles. The Buffs got up in the uh, opening game of round nine by a goal. They came back from 29 points down at three-quarter time. Charging through there, Braden McLean. O'Connell there. Couldn't take the ball with him, and so the Crocs go forward again. Huge fly by Unipingu. Left, leapt early. Barlow got a hand to it. Back to O'Connell. He's crunching a strong tackle. Barlow comes up with a footy. Squeezes the kick out only as far as Brenton Motlop. Back to Barlow. Barlow back to Tambling. The old AFL stars combine. Running back of the flight there is Motlop. Drops the mark. Sorry, McLean, I should say. Dylan Dos Santos has McLaughlin for company. Picked up by Dre Thompson. Davin Hall is right there with him. Comes back to McLaughlin of the Crocs. Farms the ball back out to Joshua. He's got a teammate. If he wants to go to him, he does so now. Comes back to Horbury. High kick on the left boot. Out towards the half forward flank. Going back the flight there was Davin Hall. Now Barlow, he's wrapped up by Dre Thompson. Got the ball away. McLaughlin's tackled strongly. This is better by the Wanderers. More intense. Comes back now to O'Connell, who's high kick out towards the wing, wants a teammate, and Collie runs back with the flight and takes a strong mark. Better play, Wanderers. Wanderers low kick up in the Jarrah direction. Goes to ground, drops the mark. Bowden to Horbury. Horbury of the Crocs kicks around the boundary line in the Barlow direction. Can he keep it in play? He does. Gets it back to his teammate in Horbury. Back to Barlow. Barlow getting busy early in the second quarter. Centering ball finds Dingo. Keenan Dingo in the middle of TIO Stadium. Early stages, second quarter. 25-point lead to the Crocs. Here's McCurry. Parryman went in hard for the Wanderers. And the ball now is squeezed out in the dire direction. 
He's got a player coming hard at him. Dyer steps around that man in Corbett pretty well. Kicks in towards the middle. And finds Warwick Williams. So the Wanderers an opportunity. Things open up across half forward. Mark has been taken. Handball off here to Collie. Runs inside 50. Collie gives it everything. Thumps towards Golson. Shepherding on the last line. But good work by Ogden. It was too strong. And was able to get a hand to it and see it through for a rush behind. Bit unlucky there, Wanderers. A chance of a turnover here, not. Aubrey's been good. Yeah. Aubrey, I think he's coaching South Bendigo in the Bendigo League this year. Running all the way from halfback is Michael Bowden, and he's got some space. He runs to 60, centering ball, wanting Farah. He dives after the footy. Josiah Farah comes sliding by, mops up, shrugs a tackle of Dylan Dos Santos, runs into the goal square, wants to handball to a teammate, <laughs> went straight past him, dodges around Dre Thompson, and then wow. misses, does he? He does from the top of the goal square from about seven and a half metres out. Isaiah Farah <laughs> can't believe it. He did all the hard work. But it's a behind only to the Crocs. Oh, he's got a smile on that his was, face. Uh, he can see the humour in it. That was very funny, that. <laughs> he knew it as well, Ricky. <laughs> if it wasn't a goal, it would have been a uh, almost footy legends moment. That Daffy there, ready to come on. It's a legends moment for all the wrong reasons <laughs> now. Braden McLean from the last line of the fence. Kicks in the my direction. Michael Bowden can't quite keep it in play for the Crocs and it goes out of bounds. I've seen uh, Josiah and Will. It's really been the Farrah show today, though. Yeah. So Meyer and Owen Skender to do the ruck work. It's a lovely uh, picture from Aboriginal TV cameraman. Meyer at the second attempt. It's down to his teammate there in Dyer. Off to O'Connell. Cole about to be run down with the flashing white boots of Joshua. The kick came up towards half forward. Warwick Williams oh, coming hard the other way. It was little. Miss in fact it was Keenan Dingo. Warwick Williams now from 50. Maybe could have a shot to the vacant goal square. Lovely pluck. One clean grab there from Kate Stevens. 30 metres out directly in front. Better movement of the footy by the Wanderers. Yeah, they need one here. See if the big man can put it, uh, put it through the middle. From Redcliffe's in Mildura. He used to play with Shannon Motlop up in the Mildura League. Actually, I think a lot of uh, a lot of the Southern Districts players have played up in the Mildura League. Dean Staunton and Willie Farrow as well have played up there. Josiah Farrow as well played in that league. So a lot of Territorians have head there. And now he's heading back this way. Beautiful part of the world, Mildura. Zach Smith marks in the right back pocket after that kick. It was off the side of the boot for a behind only. Smith transfers play to the outer side now. They're going to try and break. One-on-one -on -one contest, though. Maybe that wasn't the right option. Bowden quickly had an opponent for company there in Jabaston Priest, who did well to get across the face of that contest and slap it out of bounds. He did have the contest in front of the uh, Shannon Motlop grandstand there, and they'll uh, have a throw in. So Meyer and Owen Skender. Barlow by hand to Little, now to Schwartz Schwartz for the Crocs from half back, kicks towards half forward Davin Hall leads Dre Thompson in the race for the ball, this should be a good battle, puts on the afterburners, oh. gets away from Dre Thompson kicks to cross the face of goal Damien Williams marks, brilliant play didn't blaze away at goal Williams had run into the right forward pocket gave him the option, got away from Brett and Motlop, Williams has a chance to line up for the Crocs, sixth goal and a margin of 30 points to go back and kick this he was looking for options he's just going to ch change his mindset it just didn't look like he was too confident and it worries me when that's happening but this is a regulated kick 10 meters in front 15 meters on about a 45 degree angle he should put this through the middle but it, he's a little bit hesitant which worries me he thumps it pretty well and gets his first goal of the night. The Crocs 6th, six, 6-3, six, 39, Eagles 1-3-9. He's a versatile player, isn't he, Rick? We've seen him this season in defence, up forward and also in the ruck. Yep, the ex-GWS uh, player who's on their rookie list, I think, in their first year. Just uh, good movement here by, uh, by districts. See him move the ball. Yeah, that's just too easy. This needs to be a bit more pressure on the ball carrier. And... Uh, you see here with Devon, he just takes him on with speed. He kept his feet, which is good. The Wanderers player didn't go to ground, so that was good to keep pressure on and then uh, able to pass the ball over to Willie. Uh, 
a little bit worried it could head this way when you're talking about the sixth place Wanderers, second place Crocs, and Wanderers had a big loss against Nightcliff last week. Southern Districts had a big win against Palmerston last week, so it, it was worries it was always going to head in, out to be a bit of a blowout. Sedgwick towed it forward and then came up with a footy, got a little nudge, kicks in the Stephen direction again. He's being pushed and hassled there by Holman. And the ball goes out of bounds. Of course, with that loss of Daniel Wheat right at the back there, that could hurt Wanderers even more. Could. Sedwick is, uh, he's looked dangerous at times. He hasn't got an, his hands on the football enough, but he's got a pretty good resume from Lavington in the Ums and Murray. Made the Ums and Murray rep side this year. Pretty handy football. Not as good as it was the number one ranked countryside in Victoria. Once upon a time, about five years ago, but it's dropped a bit now. But if he's a rep player there, he really should be ripping this competition apart. He's getting better as the game's going on I reckon Rick. Yeah, he's quite first quarter. I agree he looks dangerous. He's just got to get his hands on the footy a little bit more. I read also that country footy's being, the, the country league's been disbanded. I think there's something happening in country footy in Victoria at the moment. Mm. Should be a sad thing to happen. It's been, uh, those country championships have been tremendous. Oh, the Alpins of Murray, the Golden yeah, yeah. Valley, Warnington Leagues. That's when I talk about the rankings every year. If you win you go down one and uh, which I think the amateurs in the merge, the metros and the countries have merged. I think the uh, amateurs are ranked number one over Mornington's number two at the moment. As Barlow just kicks and hopes, Meyer will get there first. Or oh, Willie Davenhall is screaming after it. Meyer got there. He realised at the last moment he had to put the gas on a little bit, uh, bit greater. And it comes out to Davenhall. He might come up and kick a wonderful goal. And he kicks across the face and looking for Williams maybe once more. Didn't find him and goes through from behind. That's is a it? goal. Wow. I thought it had gone right across the face. But that's a lovely goal by Hall. He threw everything into that contest with Meyer. Meyer was loping after it, thinking there were three or four yellow jumpers to that vacant space out at left half forward. But Hall with Thompson for company. We might see the replay in the moment. Ran at, the t at top pace, got to the contest, created a turnover. Here's the vacant space now. Well, look at the second effort of Hall, though. Dos Santos comes up with a footy there, spills off his open palm. Now it comes back to Hall and very measured approach to goal and was able to pop it through. One of uh, his cousins, Jimmy Hall, who's uh, come and played at Saints a few years ago. He's a lovely, lovely fella. Just it was his dream to come into Darwin and play footy. And uh, he just didn't stay that long. But God, he's a lovely, lovely kid. Yeah, this might have been a, a trip or a kicking in danger there. It's coming back to the Wanderers. And at the moment, they need everything going their way. Matthew Motlop to Unipingu. Pingu out towards Priest. But Priest, the centre half forward, is defensive side of the wing on the outer side. They just are being pushed all the way back at the moment. Controlling the footy well. This is a lot better by Wanderers. Warwick Williams received from Derek. The districts are able to get numbers by the footy though. That's the only problem. Williams kicks inside attacking 50. Jara in front. Got hands to it. Couldn't complete the mark. Keeps going at ground level and goes to ground. Opportunity here. Bursting through is Keelan Fijo. Couldn't get enough purchase on the footy and sprays the kick away to the right and it goes out of bounds. They really needed that wonder. It's just one goal in a quarter and a half of football. It's got to block the exits here, Wanderers. It's not going to turn over, but they just didn't block the exits real well. We'll see how they go here. Dyer, well tackled by Schwartz. Priest's high kick in towards the top of the goal square. They'd love a big mark here. In front, though, was a Crocs player. Socket oh. off the ground. That could be the goal that was much needed. And it's been banged through by Mick Derrick from the top of the square. They'll take that one. It was a little lucky, but you've got to be at the fall of the ball. And, or is there? There's now some conjecture. The umpire's going to go back and talk to the goal umpire. And it may not have been the goal, we thought. I think the umpires get no. sucked in a little bit to, to what players say. I reckon they've just got to go with their first instinct and just uh, go with it. But Mick Derrick, it's his first senior game, so he'd be happy, happy with that to get a goal on Dubu. Young player from their uh, under-18s. But you see here, they should be good at uh, ground level. They just get the ball forward and get it in long, and Mick Derrick in his first game kicks a lovely goal. Yeah, the mark could have almost been taken there by Pemberton. He had good purchase of it, and that created the opportunity for Derek. That would be the spark Wanderers need. Down by 30 points. 13 and a half minutes gone, second quarter. Round 9, TO NTFL season 19-20. Cade Stevens goes up in the ruck. 
Coming through Horbury to Tambling. Tambling to centre half forward. Dre Thompson comes out. McLaughlin, Hamble to Barlow, pokes on over the top to Davin Hall. Can he run onto it? Coming out from four forwarders, Williams might have been taken high by Dre Thompson. Play on the call, comes back to Thompson. He's slung in a tackle. Hall lurking dangerously, thrown out, comes back towards a Wanderers player though. And they can potentially clear through Jordan Jeffrey. Out to Sedgwick. Oh, he's taken a wonderful wow. tackle. Holding the ball. Brilliant play by Little. And Pierce Little, the muscle man, was far too strong for Sedgwick who tried to break the tackle. Little wasn't letting go. And he's got a shot from 50 out at left half forward. Always been one of his strengths is his tackling. I don't know whether he's got the... Uh, this is a fairly difficult kick. He was pretty confident. He didn't look around too much, so we'll see how he goes. He steps over 50. He's got the distance. The accuracy isn't there, though, and it's out of bounds on the full to the near side. Margin stays 30 points, 15 gone second quarter. Wonder as Dre Thompson got thrown around like a rag doll in a, uh, a tackle up in the 50 a little bit early, but he bounced right back up and then ended up in the square about five seconds later. Bloody resilient. Really stands out with that great head of hair too, doesn't he? Yeah, that's what looked like he got thrown around as well. His hair got thrown around as much as he did. Out of bounds, 60 out from the Crocs goal. They're kicking towards the airport end in this second quarter and the breeze, the flags next to the scoreboard on the outer side of here to be favouring that end. Uh, just as I say that, it seems to maybe go across the ground a bit. Dance moves by Matthew Duffy on the interchange there. Stevens and Corbett in ruck. Stevens from behind wins the tap. Bo O'Connell goes through. Horbury to Joshua. Handballs to himself. Runs onto the footy. Can he control it? Close to the boundary line, it goes out. Joshua from Catherine. Close for Berwick in the Catherine Footy League. Bit of a powerhouse down there. And uh, they provide a lot of good footballs to uh, NTFL football from that area. 40 metres around from the Crocs goal. Left half forward. Corbett got to the front. Won the tap. As far as Jabaston Priest. Slaps along the ground. Looking for the advantage of a teammate. Dingo came the other way. Dyer. Well played by Horbury. He's been good tonight. Kicks it back inside. Attacking 50. Misses the target though. Had a player on in the pocket in Little, and it slides out of bounds. 30 around from the Crocs goal, left half forward. The yeah, Horbury's a, uh, got a very good resume in the uh, Ballarat Football League. I think he's playing the Premiership with Redan, I think, and uh, he's then moved into coaching. I think he's coaching South Bendigo. It's either his first year or he coached them last year. Going into his second year this year. Corbett got rid of Stevens, comes to Joshua. Fancy feet to Little, just punches it on, looking for Schwartz through his legs, socket along towards Williams, goes through from behind. I think the late change today, I've been trying to work it out. Steve Stewart, I think, was in the original team sheet, and Davin Hall has come in. Okay. Which is probably what we've seen tonight. Not a bad move. Steve Stewart, a terrific hard nosed midfielder, tagger type. But we've seen the pace of Davin Hall on display, setting up one goal and kicking one himself. Where Nooker is that? About six hours from Catherine. Have I got that community right? Northeast. Now I just East. know last time he was here because you can drive. When his cousin came in, Jimmy Hall, it was a sort of lovely, lovely kid. He got on a, a bus. He'd been on a bus for about nine hours to play a game of footy, and I picked him up at the uh, at the uh, bus station. And I just knew then the rains come around Christmas, and it's very difficult to, for him to come into Darwin. So it's the only problem they have. And charter flights to that area are not cheap. Kick comes back into the forward pockets off Barlow's hands and out of bounds. It's a bit of a lull in the match. Wanderers are fighting hard to stay in it. It's been a three goal to one quarter in favour of the Crocs. They look very dangerous early and the margin could have been anything. But the last five or six minutes, the Wanderers have really stood up. But it's just 25 metres from the Crocs goal. Stevens up against Corbett. Off the ground goes Sedgwick. He clears defensive 50, only as far as McLaughlin, the ever-reliable. He wasted no time, spun around, put it under the right boot and wanted the chest of Farrah. He dropped the mark. He had players coming back on him, might have obstructed him. Bo O'Connell's kick is high back into the middle and Ogden runs back with the flight and will send the Crocs back towards half-forward. He's got little at right half forward, 60 from goal. By hands he goes to McLaughlin, shrugs the tackle, runs to 50, kicks in the Barlow direction. He's well set from behind and takes the mark, plays on, kicks the goal. Dang. 
Well played, Crocs. Wonderful movement from half back. The turnover was on through the middle. Ogden formed the line, sent it straight back in, and Barlow is always going to take that mark. AFL experience banged it through for the eighth for the Crocs. Second time McLaughlin went to uh, Barlow in the space of a couple of minutes, but. Uh the yeah, Alphonse Districts will be trying to get in as quick as I can to one-on-ones to Farah and uh, Bailey. They did it the play before. And you see that, as you said, Rob, the more you get it to this guy in a one-on-one -on -one situation like that, is uh, very difficult to stop. Ed Barlow nicknamed the horse, and he has been a workhorse tonight. The horse, interesting nickname. The horse, yeah. I was going to ask if you knew the origins of that, Ricky. No, I know uh, John Longmire, the Sydney Swans coach, is also called the horse not quite sure why though something about sydney mm. owen skender in ruck up against cade stevens well done by mclaughlin stripped him of the football went hard at it at grand level but it comes back to the wanderers oh curry parryman was in there had it for a moment then lost it and the ball's coming back to the crocs yeah, it's going to go to charlie mcadam He's got a man free and Williams at centre half forward who drops oh. the easiest of marks. It's one of those tricky ones. Do you take it in front of the eyes or do you take the chest mark? Davin Hall will mop up though for the Crocs. Comes back to McAdam. McAdam's kick off free man out at half forward. It's all happening here. And to Zach Smith from 40 metres. Got bumped as he tried to kick the footy. In the Will Farrah direction. One, two, three grabs. Farrah too strong. And the Crocs are turning it on again at the 20 minute mark of the second quarter. A goal here will really blow out this margin close to half time after Wanderers had probably held sway for the last six or seven minutes but two quick goals for the Crocs and the margin could really blow out here it'll go up to 43 points if Farah kicks his third which he doesn't slams into the right hand goal post a let off for the Wanderers Crocs 8-5 Eagles 2-3 that's what I'm talking about William he's a very very good football he just can't afford to miss those 20 meters out the year he kicked 100, he just wouldn't have missed those goals. He's just got to go back an extra couple of steps, concentrate a bit, a little bit harder. Back to the wing for the Wanderers. Is there time to sneak a goal in before half-time? Joel Cabillo. Kick straight into a contest there. Still Cabillo. No, it's Braden McLean, I should say. Now back to Cabillo. Play being held and holding the footy. So it's going to be a free kick to Keenan Dingo and 50 metres. All going the Crocs way at the moment. Ricky had touched before about Will Farrow just needing to, you know, take his time and a, a little bit more. And with the margin that they've got at the moment, it's healthy. But there are also uh, three other teams uh, in the competition at the moment um, with the same amount of wins, five wins, um, three losses. So percentage is really important. And so the bigger the margin you can get, the more percentage you get. That's what's going to help keep them in second place. It is. I reckon that, uh, that's third, yeah, that third spot's always very, very valuable. So mm. you're correct, Matthew. This might have been a double 50 by the looks of it, cause, or if it's not, I want to buy real estate off the, uh, <laughs> the umpire. But I think you'll find it's a double 50 to get that far. Umpire Barisi as Keegan Dingo misses to the left. And That's what you talk about it, Matt. I just reckon good sides just go bang. You know, like a game like this, they've lost their best yeah. player. You could really put them away right now. Wanderers don't look like they're up and about. I just reckon they could really cause some damage here. Eight well, six now. Brenton Motlop at the back of the pack. Davin Hall kicks to himself in the end. And he got taken down off the footy. Play on the call. Jordan Jeffrey ducks his head. Dre Thompson comes up with it. Sneaks on onto the right boot. Gets it to his teammate in Mark White. And White for Wanderers to Sedgwick. He juggles the mark but takes it safely at half back. He plays on quickly to Warwick Williams who comes a long way up from centre half forward and marks in front of Zach Smith. Williams kicks up towards full forward. Jara props, stops, takes a one-hander. Oh, not paid by the umpire. I thought he almost did enough. Jara plays on. Is he being held? He was, says the ump. Still got talent, haven't he? And Jara has it from 60 metres. He's inside the centre square, kicking to the Michael Long centre end. Has to move it quickly. That love a goal before half time. He gives it Big everything. Fun. It carries towards the square. Big fly from behind from Collie. But the ball didn't carry. And it's going to be half time here at TIO Stadium with a big lead to the Crocs. 8 6 54. The Eagles 2 3 15. We're here for when the heavens open and the winds howl. We're here for when the water just won't stop. 
We're here for the wet and we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Absolutely zero. Zero. Yeah, definitely. It has to be zero. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I don't think that's asking too much. How does he do it? 24.5 kilowatt diesel motor. He doesn't just know how to operate every piece of Kenard's high gear we get in, but also its service details, its safety checks. I don't know. <laughs> it's as if he can hypnotise each piece. <laughs> Give me two passes with sauce. Coffee white with one, bun with icing. No, pink icing. Yep, no worries, Terry. It belongs to you, it belongs to me, it belongs to everybody. I'm talking about family violence. It's time we said no more to family violence. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. We've all got to say no more to family violence. No more! Family violence is a community problem and it needs a community response from all of us and sport is a big part of that. But we can all do our bit by being more respectful to each other. Please make this year the year we say no more to family violence. Looking for the best and brightest to join your team? At Quality People, we specialise in finding quality, hard-to-get professionals. And we have an office right here in Darwin. Kick your recruitment goals with Quality People. Qualitypeople.com.au Now that's quality. You are one of almost 140,000 people living in an area at risk of being affected by a cyclone this wet season. In your cyclone kit, you will need a battery-operated radio and torch with spare batteries, enough food and at least 10 litres of water per person to sustain you and your family for 72 hours or more. Remember, all important documentation such as passports, photos and insurance policies should be kept in a safe and waterproof place. Be prepared this wet season. Brought to you by TIO. On Territory Roads, anything can happen. So you need to drive to the conditions. Speeding can get you into all sorts of trouble. Dirt roads aren't just dusty. When it's hard to see, they're dangerous. At water crossings, remember, you're driving a motor car, not a boat. High water can be deep trouble. <laughs> So here's everything you need to know about the Great Air Race in 30 seconds or less. A hundred years ago, there was a race from London to Darwin by aeroplane. And mates, this was only 20 years after the first aeroplane flew just 37 metres. The winning plane, a Vickers Vimy, was flown by Australian brothers Ross and Keith Smith and their mechanics Wally Shires and Jim Bennett. This was the birth of international air travel and they landed in Parap. There's a park there now. Some people reckon their flight was almost as significant as the Apollo missions 50 years later. Some of the places they landed had never even seen an aeroplane before. This year, a guy called Michael Smith, who isn't related to the other Smiths, is retracing the exact flight 100 years on. The Great Air Race, what a great territory story. Yeah, 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 I know, it was longer than 30 seconds. There's just too much to fit in.
the NTFL clubs and umpires would like to share the following events and messages and thank their sponsors. Getting my hands on the footy and you know, just being with my mates. I like being outdoors. It just makes me happy. I don't like it when I get yelled at. It's pretty embarrassing when someone's shouting at you halfway through the game. It makes me feel like I'm useless and I can't do anything. We're just kids. We're just here to have fun. Let us do what we love. Just let kids be kids. You go home and get your panties. I'll go home and get my panties and away we'll go. Oh, shuffle up the buffle. Shuffle up the buffle. Oh. Wedding or birthday is coming up? Maybe a get together with friends and family. Waratah Clubhouse at Gardens Oval is the perfect venue for your next community function. Celebrating the home to one of Darwin's iconic football clubs, Waratah Clubhouse. Students from Mandari School in Central Australia and Nyu Community Daly River travel to Darwin to participate in the Michael Long Learning Leadership Centre and Point Pathways program. Here's a rundown of what they got up to. We spent the afternoon learning from rangers who are leaders in our community who look after our country. On our second day, we explored deployment pathway at CDU. At CDU, we learned about curious in health and learned new skills on how to care for sick patients. On Thursday, we will be participating in work experience at AFLNT. Today, we prepared for this by writing a CV and cover letters. We experienced an interview and had to explain why we wanted the job. We got up so early today to go to North Falls. We did fitness training, learned about jobs in North Falls and got to view lots of equipment. In the afternoon, we visited Aboriginal Broadcasting. Some of us got to go on radio, others made TV commercials. Today, we got to work at the AFL NTs. The choices were reception, media, maintenance, and game development. And one group had the chance to work with Karen Sheldon Catering. We are learning about tourism and hospitality at school. This morning we saw all the jobs available in a hotel and visited Crocodiles Cove. The crocodiles were awesome and they were heaps of people with cool jobs here too. The thing I liked most about this week was uh, everything. Teaching other kids. The Crocodiles Cove. Hating. Game development because we went to Marara and teach the kids how to play footy. Training. I like playing games with the kids and teaching them things. Going to North Force and looking at their cool equipment. For more information, please visit the Relevant Club or Umpire's Facebook page.
Half time here at TIO Stadium, Southern Districts 8 6 54, leading the Wanderers 2 3 15. Matt Hepworth, Ricky Nolan, and Rob Cross with you on a uh, very balmy Saturday night here in the top end. Um, it's all been the uh, Southern District's way, gentlemen. Ricky, is there anything Wanderers can do to get themselves back in the game for the second half? I uh, just I don't know if they've got the cattle at the moment. A few injuries, Darren Weitra going down. Um, I just think districts are a better side. But yeah, they obviously, just get their hands on the footy, try and move the ball a bit quicker down to Liam Jara. They've got a pretty good midfield. Not a good lot of a uh, couple of might be a couple of fly-ins or some good recruits in there. Um, so we'll see what uh, happens in the second half. One interesting change, Ricky Jabasson Priest has gone into the ruck. Scott Meyer in the goal square. I'm not sure if he's 100% fit. We saw him off the ground quite a bit in the first half. He's just doing some stretching at the top of the goal square at the airport end. Liam Jara has come out standing between centre half forward and full forward so a tall strong forward line Warwick Williams at centre half forward they've just got to get it down to them as Jabaston Priest wins the first tap down in the path of Dyer who breaks a tackle and kicks up towards full forward Meyer has front spot, spot well done by Holman goes to the back of the pack this might be an opportunity quick snap on goal is a good one goal within 15 seconds to the Wanderers great play and just what the Eagles needed and they go to 3 3 21 to the Crocs 8 6 54. Just over for the break, they've got some decent players in Sidwick, uh, Dyer, and also Bo O'Connell in the middle. So they've got some girls you can see here. Like, this guy here's got a good resume from down south. They've got some good players in Dyer. They've got some good players in the middle. Just got to get it down there quickly. And uh, see what I can look at. But fair kick this. Yeah, good Mark goal. White, great goal. So uh, he's had a fairly good game. So see if they can get out of the middle again. I said, as I said, they've got some good cattle in the middle. Corbett wins that tap. Sedgwick tried to keep the ball in front, still pushing it along. Well done by Priest. And he dives on again. Oh, I might have been taken high. There he was. Good umpire there. The yeah, umpire's very well positioned. And Sedgwick went hard after the footy, had his head over the ball. And good display of sportsmanship there by Little helping him up collecting him in the head accidentally just part of the game Sedgwick kicks towards half foot huge leap there across half forward comes to O'Connell this is better by the Wanderers kick in the Meyer direction goes up one-handed was pushed under the footy by Holman comes back there to Bowden he sweeps a handball over the top to Horbury Horbury tries to sell the candy brings it back to Holman from the right back pocket he kicks around the wing bounces once and goes out of bounds on the full in fact so a chance for the Wanderers at left half forward. Exciting start. Under two minutes. They've already kicked one goal. And they might get a chance to set up another. Stretching mark was fortuitous to Braden McLean, the skipper. Goes to Dyer, who's got busy. O'Connell, oh, should have taken the mark inside 50. Off hands. And another opportunity goes begging. Interesting with Wanderers. I think they've won the last three under 18 premierships. So there is a bit of talent there, but... Sometimes I reckon if you put too much of an emphasis on winning junior premierships, uh, kids get put into a false security of where they actually are football-wise. So, yeah, there's talent there, but just winning junior premierships isn't the be-all and end-all, in my opinion. Here's the excitement machine, Davin Hall. Jabaston Priest, look at the pace for the big man, but Hall just swivels the hips and gets away and then pokes a kick out towards half-forward in the Will Farrah direction. Farrah. Kicks up towards the goal square. Oh, awkward bounce over the top. Williams might be a chance here. Little there also. And the ball is rushed out of bounds by Matthew Motlop. Unselfish by Will Farrah. Yeah, put it to the, to the, uh, to the top of the square. He could have tried the one in a million goal of the year you know, from the check side from 50 metres out. But put it to the front of the square. Gave that behind pole a good shake, didn't they? Lee Ooh. Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat lacklustre first half has come to light. Come mm, to life, yeah. I should say. They started probably a bit negative, actually, the way I said. I thought they, they didn't have the cattle on the field. Of course, you've got the cattle on the field. You've just got to play better footy. Not lot. Whistle goes, and they might have a take two here for the boundary throw in. Well, the number, the number one thing you've got to do is get your hands on the footy, and that's what Wanderers have done in the first three minutes. Good move to put Jabaston Priest into the rack. Corbett from behind wins the tab, tums, taps it back into the corridor. Little grubbing kick comes out towards centre half forward. Derek grabs the foot. He did well. Got it out to Collie, and Collie kicks towards the wing. Running back with the flight there was is it Priest, I think it might have been. Coming out from centre half forward was Liam Jarrah. It was Warwick Williams. Jarrah was there as well, and there's going to be a boundary throw in. Priest and Corbett in ruck. 
True centre wing in front of the Morris Rioli grandstand here at TIO Stadium. Four minutes gone, third quarter. Crocs lead by 33 points. Only goal so far of this quarter has gone to the Wanderers. And that was in the first 15 seconds as Dyer hard at the contest sees it out of bounds. This is before the Mark Jara and, um, and Sebastian Gillias so haven't played for districts this year, so haven't really had a big name Ruckman from down south. Let's see what Shannon Motlop might just go with the locals. Corbett's been pretty serviceable. Shannon Rusper, I might say. Priest won the tap. Dingo wrapped up in a strong tackle there by Cabillo. Connell, McLaughlin, out of bounds. A few rumours during the week that uh, Sebastian Gillias is uh, going to be on the next Big Brother. I did say that. Yeah. Be interesting. He's uh, no, was it Big Brother or Maths? No, uh, it was Big Brother. Uh, might be Maths. Matt, so. the, uh, yeah, married at first sight. Not the fight. Not he's that I know. A, uh, had a bit to do with Seb over the years. He is a. How can I put it? A different unit. <laughs> he's a big unit. <laughs> Well done by Barlow. Oh, Unipingo dashing onto the left boots in front of Warwick Williams. Hits him on the chest and drops the mark. Can he get away from Zach Smith? Another chance misses. The ball becoming slippery, maybe. He should have gobbled that up, and they were away. And now the turnover's on. Oh, McAdam drops the mark as well. Comes to Joshua. Clever, straight to boot. Comes to Schwartz. Schwartz kick in the Farrow direction. Where's Will? He won't fly. Williams was in front of the pack. Davin Hall left it alone, then mops up. Handball too tall there for McAdam. Comes back there to Joshua. He wants our oh, clever by Horbury, tucked it under the wing, gave it to Tambling, off to Williams, one way then the other, squeezes it back to Joshua, too far, Brenton Motlop charges through, Tambling out there to Davin Hall, shrugs the tackle, back onto the right boot, centering ball is excellent, and on the bounce to McLaughlin, can he shrug you know, Pingu? he can, runs to 40, Dylan McLaughlin, and his kick is across the face and out of bounds. It's scrappy, a lot of turnovers, mm. especially talking about that Wanderers one, they just I've only got a bit of a bit of a roll on. Just dropping a chest mark like that can, uh, can just stop momentum. Scoreless so far. Six minutes into the third quarter. The Crocs, 8-6-54. It comes to Williams. He gets stripped of the footy. Oh, Good Jeffrey runs there, straight into the umpire. <laughs> creates a chance for Will Farrer for his third goal near side. And a let off there. One behind only 8 7 plays 3 3. The margin is 34 points. Six and a half gone, third quarter. Crocs lead Eagles. O'Connell, terrific young player, finds the chest of Warwick Williams who gobbles that one up, clutches it to his chest. Wasn't dare going to bounce away. Williams to the wing. Gee, that wants to be spot on. It's almost out on the full of thoughts. White couldn't quite get there. And then McAdam, little grumpily, pushes wide off the footy. I'm just going to watch that. He's lucky not to give away a 50, yeah, to be honest. Away 50, there's just no need to do it. Umpire, let it go. So, boundary throw in, centre wing in front of the Morris Rioli grandstand. Crocs 8 7, Eagles 3 3. Seven minutes gone, third quarter. Kate Stevens working hard from behind, wins the tap, only as far as Charlie McAdam. Hooks the ball around the corner. Flying there was Little. Out comes Barlow. Creates a path for Little. Bumped off the footy by Unipingu. Close to the boundary line and out. Unipingu just reacts to some treatment Braden McLean got from Pierce Little, I think. Players settle down now. Yeah, so another boundary throw in. Good, tight, tough opening to the third quarter. Left half forward for the Crocs. And spilling after the footy there was Keelan Fijo. Southern District's really enjoying playing on this side of the uh, the wing tonight. A few people in on Saturday night, the last mm. game of round nine of the TIO NTFL 2019-20 season. A couple of thrillers, one blowout, and this game is just seesawing between blowout and thriller. D Dylan McLaughlin throws it on the right boot, sends the Crocs back into attack. Will Farrer is there in the contest, still going Farrer. There's a whistle blown, a hold, and it's going to wander his way. It'll come out to Dylan Dos Santos at half forward. Will the ball sit? It does. He's got really nothing ahead. Braden McLean gave him something in board with a handball. Then he kicks long. Here's the chance for the Wanderers. Oh, the mark was spilt there by Derek. One way, then the other. But taken down in a tackle. And Dre Thompson comes in to lend assistance. Spilling after the footy there was Joshua. He fights hard. But he's got a couple of yellow jumpers around him. The ball eventually slapped out of bounds before Pemberton could gather and a boundary throw in. Some interesting results. I reckon could have changed the whole season. It didn't happen, but I reckon if Palmerston had have beaten uh, Buffs, it would have been a massive up upset. You can go, Rob. Boundary throw in. 
Buffs came back from a 29-point three-quarter time deficit. As Sedgwick had the kick smothered. Clever there by Cabillo. Nudged it along the ground there to O'Connell. Comes to Dyer. Dyer spearing ball right under the chest there. White was brilliant. That's better by the Wanderers. We've got a moment here, Rick, just to... Yeah, I just... So, if... Because I reckon that third place is going to be pretty hot to get, I reckon, between Saints, Buffs, yep. and then... And then today with uh, with Tiwi, because Tiwi's the other one, I reckon, chasing that third spot. I reckon Knight will finish top pretty easy. Gabe and I reckon Knight District finished, second. Yeah. But yeah, and then if uh, if Tiwi had got up today, so just that didn't happen. But if those if those two upsets had to happen, would have uh, changed the face of the uh, of the year a lot. I reckon. Great third quarter for Mark White. He kicked a goal inside the first 15 seconds of the term, and playing across the full forward line has got his second for the quarter. The Eagles get their fourth, and the margin is 28 points. Four three plays eight seven. Is that the bow and arrow from Mark White there? Mm -hmm. See on the replay at the end there. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Controversial. Let's wait and see. Like Connell's been good, hasn't he? Yeah, that's a good pass inside. They've uh, certainly performed a lot better, haven't they? In the second, uh, like I said, we always want to see the ball moving, so it's good, good work by the Aboriginal TV replay people. So yeah, two. so if there had been two upsets today, I just got it would have really shaped the the season, especially for that top three. It didn't happen. Both sides and Buffs were very lucky to get over the line last night. Kate Stevens, Sedgwick's been busy, as has Dyer in this quarter. The big bodies of the fly-in players comes to Stevens, nudged under the footy there cleverly. Out came Jara, taken down in a tackle. Pemberton goes down as well. It's starting to get a bit willing. Jara's going to win a free kick. He could nearly kick this, could uh, I would back him, yeah. And Smith might have hurt his shoulder in that collision as well. He's standing on the mark looking a little ginger. No, he's okay. Jarrah was over 50 out before and he managed to hit the square in the uh, previous quarter. Flags not fluttering as hard as they have been. But he might pretty be confident though. Really good body language. Body himself. language tells a lot, doesn't it? So he'll kick from about 52 metres, right half forward, Liam Jara for his second goal of the night and to bring the margin back to just 22 points, Jara kicks. Beautiful kick by Liam Jara. Clap through in the square, both arms go up and Jara kicks his second. Wonderful comeback by the Eagles. That is their third goal for the term. 5-3-33, Crocs 8-7-55. Wouldn't you just love to have the talent of this kick here? You know, like 60 metres out, touches mm. the ball, goes over. You just, you'd die to have that sort of talent. Look at that. This, he, Beautiful look, kick. I talked about body language. He went back. He just knew that he was capable mm. of kicking that goal quite comfortably. I think I would have liked with Palmerston if they had a one last night. St Mary's won the wooden spoon last year with five losses. That's pretty healthy, not healthy for St Mary's, but it's a healthy for a competition that the bottom side wins five games. I'd love the same thing to happen two years in a row. It just means that you've got a pretty vibrant competition when the bottom side. If Palmerston, I think that would have been two, year, two wins for the year. If they could have won another three after Christmas, you've got a very vibrant competition. Sedgwick's getting really busy. He's stripped off a footy then, but gee, did well to go hard at it. Oh, well done by Josiah Farah. He burst through O'Connell and sent the Crocs inside attacking 50. The Wanderers threatened to take it down towards their forward line. Going to ground was Corbett. Dre Thompson charges through. O'Connell just pokes it through to Corbett, who's taken down in a strong tackle by Duffy. This is a terrific contest now. Comes out towards the wing. Dylan Dos Santos steps back inside Josiah Farah. Can he get it by hand to Kate Stevens? They're away, the Wanderers. Steve Stevens kicks long, up towards half forward. Out comes White! White marks on his chest and will line up for his third goal for the quarter in just 13 minutes of footy. And could the margin be back to 16 wow. points, Ricky Nolan? I was talking about before when Crocs just should have put him away. And now, you know what muck muck's like with that spirit? They're up and about and their crowd gets in and yep. next thing they're back in the game. A reminder that in the second quarter, their star player, Daniel Weitra, went off with an ankle injury not to come back for the night. This is a spirited effort by the Eagles for their sixth goal and to bring the margin back to 16 points. White for his third for the quarter. Stuttering approach. Has it got the swing? It has! It clears the goal line. White has three for the term. Pounds his chest. And sure enough, some big heart coming through for the Eagles. 6-3-39. The Crocs 8-7-55.
Ricky, you talk about missed opportunities. We can see the score there. Uh, Southern District's 8 7 55. A lot of those seven behinds were either set shots or shots that they really should have got within the first couple of quarters. Yeah, and if you even went to a, a stat of forward half, you know, when the ball, how much the ball or percentage of the ball being in the, fir, the forward, forward half of the ground, districts would have been up there around the 80%. They just. Mm. The good sides just really put sides away, and districts should have done that, and this game should be over. Now the muck muck spirit's up and alive, and. We've got a ball game. It's being set up from the middle. Priest doing well in the ruck. Dyer, Sedgwick, two good country Victorian footies. Dyer again steps around Barlow and then kicks up towards half four. Jara! Well, 35 metres out directly in front. Shannon Rusk will be sorting out this middle. middle. I'll be a bit worried about Luke Dyer because the amount of uh, centre clearances he's had and this quarter has been ridiculous, but they've got to sort out the middle. White just brought up his third moments ago. Jarrah lining up for his third. Distance will not be a problem. He's directly in front from 40 metres out Priest, for a 10-point ball game. Priest as well going in the middle has been a good move, Rob, as well for boy Shannon Motlock. In comes Jarrah. Kicks, and he's hooked it, I think. It's away to the left, and the momentum stalls momentarily. Eagles 6 4 40, Crocs 8 7 55, 15 gone, third quarter. Yes, momentum, I say, is the biggest thing in footy, and just if if they had to kick that, the muck mucks, it would have been interesting. Ogden to bring the ball back into play for the Crocs. He goes straight down the ground, no mucking around. Player goes down at the back of the pack. It was Will Farrah. He bounces up quickly, though. Paddles along in front of himself. Paddles it straight into the part of Horbury. It was excellent play to Josiah Farrah. Farrah kicks to the vacant forward line. Two-on-one battle. The speedy Davin Hall, though, lurks. Braden McLean gets it first for the Wanderers. And then kicks right across the face of goal. Terrible kick oh. straight in the lap of McLaughlin. And that was possibly the pressure coming from Davin Hall in the left forward pocket. He wanted to switch play as a wobbly, horrible kick, and McLaughlin was in the way, and this could undo part of the good work of the Eagles. That's uh, probably another move I reckon Wanderers have made is McLean's gone outside back onto Davin Hall because Davin was pretty, uh, pretty uh, dangerous. Not that the ball's been down there a lot, but... Uh yeah, they've sort of quiet Davin Hall a little bit. But uh, McLean, it wasn't the greatest kick. McLaughlin and has kicked it out of bounds on the full. Well, that's a massive let off for the Wanderers. Mm. Margin stays at 15 points. They bring it back into play quickly and transfer it down the outer side of TIO Stadium. Good, strong mark by Jabaston Priest. He's rucking and rolling. And he bounces back to his feet after taking a strong mark. And he thumps it 50 metres up towards half forward. Collie's at the back. Marks and goes. He could shoot for goal or kick towards Meyer. Doesn't quite get to him. Holman stood in the way. And well played by Tom Holman. Last line of defence. Game of inches are just... Oh, touch he gave higher. it everything to get it over the head there, didn't he? Didn't quite make it to its intended target. Pemberton goes to ground. Barlow's well tackled by Derek. Dre Thompson, he gathers, gets around Joshua. Play on the call. He almost stopped. Goal. Shoots it. Goal from Dre from the boundary line. Brilliant play by Dre Thompson. And the Eagles are within nine points. Wow. 17 minutes gone, third quarter. 8-7 plays, 7-4. And this is wonderful spirited play by the mighty Eagles. I think the Southern District's coach's box, I'd be going from not really worried. I'd be now really starting to worry, especially in the middle. But have a look at his goal. It's not a bad effort by Derek. Just did enough to hold Barlow up. And when he heard the whistle, he stopped. He, he yeah. Yeah, and then went, oh, it was the advantage. Just left the foot, you knew it was a goal. It was a great goal. I was watching the Southern District's coaching group at half time Rick just before play started they did look pretty happy and yeah, pleased with themselves yeah. nothing against that I suppose when you're winning but uh, as you say there might be the conversation do. might be different at three quarter time I think I was lucky enough to hear Alistair Clarkson speak one time and he said football the number one thing you've got to do is football's got to be fun so it does it's got to be fun but you also got to players have got to be on edge a little bit as well how long can Sedgwick and Dyer go they've been at every oh, centre bounce yeah. as has Sebast Sebastian Priest, Sedgwick, Dyer, I should say. Good strong tackling in the middle. And it's going to be a ball up. The umpire let it go for a little while. You're right, 
do you, do you, there's three minutes to go. Do you bring them off and concede a goal so they're fresh for the last quarter? Off the ground goes Barlow. Josiah Farrow runs onto it and gathers it superbly, shrugs a tackle, then hooks a kick towards the vacant square, runs to the back. Brenton Motlop, Motlop's going hard at it. It clears the two charging players in Riley Owen Skender and also Motlop and goes through for a behind. Just their second score of the quarter. They've kicked two behinds for the turn. Oh. The Crocs. Oh, Unipingu's in trouble. Is he going to be pinged? He is. Little has brought him down and a winner free kick. Wanderers now got a pair off. Let make him kick the footy from there because it's a pretty hard kick for a right footer. We've got to absolutely ensure that he uh, isn't allowed to bring the ball in inbound. Right forward pocket, about 20 metres out. Just a couple of metres in from the boundary line, though. They lead by 10 points. The Eagles have kicked five goals to none this quarter. Very Eddie Betts angle, that one, isn't But this would just stop the momentum for a moment if Little could squeeze it through. He shoots on goal and he's across the face and just a behind. It's a very difficult kick from there. Mm. So 8 9 57 the Crocs. Almost 20 minutes played, third quarter, Eagles 7 4 46. Ball brought out towards Braden McLean. Had time to spill the mark and kick it towards Collie. Very clear difference of uh, Wanderers always going down that side of the field um, and then uh, Southern Districts going on the other side. We've got numbers out the back here. Districts, if they can get it. Well, Warwick Williams got hands to it. Couldn't take the mark. Barlow up towards half forward. Schwartz quickly threw the ball onto his boot. And McLean comes out and marks at left half back. Waste no time to O'Connell, who's had a good quarter. Bo O'Connell, one of the young stars of the Wanderers lineup. Yeah, he has had a good quarter. And a lovely kick, too, out towards Collie, who's just slipped down towards half forward. Still 80 metres from goal. A few minutes remaining in his third quarter. They trail by just 11 points. Jara, Jara against Bowden to the back of the pack. Ogden gets there first for the Crocs. Handball's back inboard to Bowden. The left foot is close to the line and it's out of bounds on the full. So 55 metres around from goal. Left half forward for the Wanderers. But, uh, with Wanderers, I said about the 18s who won the last three flags. Now, I don't know. I've never seen them train. But oh, yeah, back in their heyday, you'd have Thomas Motlop or Neil Vivi. You'd just see them running around Marara, pumping out 2.2s after 2.2s on a Monday night. They, they used to train hard. Now, that, they've got to install that sort of uh, work rate into these young kids. And, uh, and they'll be around the mark. So, yeah, the talent's there. They've won three under-18 flags in a row. But they've now got to start working hard to go to that next level. McLean sends it inside, attacking 50. White sandwiched in between three crocs, bursting through as Dyer, threw the ball onto the boots. It's going to be kicked out of bounds on the full in the right forward pocket, though. McConnell and Dyer are the two that have had huge quarters. Bowden brings it out for the Crocs to the wing. Little strong mark on a drop at the last moment. Held it for long enough, said the umpire. Opposed there to McCurry Parryman. To Bowden. An unusual mistake by him. Barlow tried to sock it off the ground. Ricochets off the shins and comes to McAdam. Back to Little. Back to Barlow. Slips through his fingertips. He's having not a great quarter, is the star, Ed Barlow. Well tackled there was Horbury by Dylan Dos Santos. Flung over the boundary line. Josiah Farrow wanted to get into him but it was a completely fair tackle and so Brenton Motlop comes up to have a word to Josiah Farrah players part and settle down we'll have a boundary throw in interchange gate in front of the Morris Rioli grandstand ripping third quarter it's been all Eagles they trail by just 11 points good thump by Stevens comes out to Cabillo to Warwick Williams traps the ball cleverly the big man over the top it comes to his teammate in Fijo his quick kick on the bounce can it squeeze through to Collie well played by Schwartz, then slaps it through his legs. Collie still fighting hard. Comes there to Derek, well played. There's a carry the required distance. White runs back with the flight. No mark could be paid. The Crocs will clear through Ogden. Comes there to Dingo. Hacks the kick back into the centre square. Bouncing ball. Who's it going to favour? It's awkward. Well played by McCurry Parryman. Gave it to Motlop. Just pressured enough there. Well played by Davin Hall. Spilling out for the footy at ground level though is big Cade Stevens. Umpire comes in. There'll be a ball up. What a ripping contest this third quarter's been. Completely different to the first half where it was all the Crocs. The Eagles are making a game of it. There's a goal in it. I'm just wondering with the, where the stoppage is now, or the last stoppage, whether they get Dyer off, whether they get Connell off. Might concede a goal. They go in with a little bit of fresh legs. So here he is now. You could, I just reckon you could make this interchange now. They might, they might have a goal scored against them. Too late now, but they have fresh legs. 
He's ran the whole quarter on the ball, so it was interesting to see how he runs out the game. Three-quarter time in this thrilling round nine match at TAO Stadium. It's the Crocs 8-9-57, goalless in that quarter. The Eagles kick five, 7-4-46. We're here for when the heavens open and the winds howl. We're here for when the water just won't stop. We're here for the wet and we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Mother Nature can be frighteningly predictable in the Territory this time of year. Heavy rains and damaging winds can cause significant problems and disruption, particularly if you're unprepared, while downed power lines and flash flooding can be lethal. To ensure you're ready, visit powerwater.com.au forward slash safety or text safety to 0428 323 991 for more information. Because staying safe and ready around Mother Nature should be second nature. CFS Schoolwear is the perfect choice for quality custom-made school uniforms. Ideal clothing for all school-related activities, whether it's 50 or 500 students, we have what you need. Contact the Cricket and Football Shop NT for your free CFS Schoolwear quote today. Let's see. Roma, Verona? Perhaps Barcelona. Make your dream holiday a reality. Book your next getaway at Flight Centre with interest-free holidays and flexible repayment options. Best in the year. And everywhere. Flight Centre. Intersport, new concept store now opening Casuarina Square. Come in and check out a world-class shopping experience. Dedicated sports zones. Now stocking only the biggest brands in tennis, tennis. Cricket. cricket, fitness from treadmills to benches, boxing, boxing. Swimming. swimming, darts, pool and table tennis. For awesome service and advice, Come and see it. still locally owned and operated, the all-new Intersport concept store. Now open at Casuarina Square. Boys, we've got a real big problem. It belongs to you, it belongs to me, it belongs to everybody. I'm talking about family violence. It's time we said no more to family violence. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. We've all got to say no more to family violence. No more! Family violence is a community problem and it needs a community response from all of us and sport is a big part of that. But we can all do our bit by being more respectful to each other. Please make this year the year we say no more to family violence. You are one of almost 140,000 people living in an area at risk of being affected by a cyclone this wet season. In your cyclone kit, you will need a battery-operated radio and torch with spare batteries, enough food and at least 10 litres of water per person to sustain you and your family for 72 hours or more. Remember, all important documentation such as passports, photos and insurance policies should be kept in a safe and waterproof place. Be prepared this wet season. Brought to you by TIO. So here's everything you need to know about the Great Air Race in 30 seconds or less. A hundred years ago, there was a race from London to Darwin by aeroplane. And mates, this was only 20 years after the first aeroplane flew just 37 metres. The winning plane, a Vickers Vimy, was flown by Australian brothers Ross and Keith Smith and their mechanics Wally Shires and Jim Bennett. This was the birth of international air travel and they landed in Parap. There's a park there now. Some people reckon their flight was almost as significant as the Apollo missions 50 years later. Some of the places they landed had never even seen an aeroplane before. This year, a guy called Michael Smith, who isn't related to the other Smiths, is retracing the exact flight 100 years on. The Great Air Race, what a great territory story. Yeah, 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 I know, it was longer than 30 seconds. There's just too much to fit in.
three-quarter time here at TIO Stadium, Southern Districts 8-9, 57, Wanderers 7-4, 46. And what a comeback by the Muck Mucks. It was uh, Ricky Nolan and uh, Rob Cross. And Ricky, well, we pretty well all but wrote them off at uh, three-quarter at uh, half-time, but they came back. It was a f- oh, call spade a spade. It was a flat and terrible game. And then uh, they come out and they were great. Wanderers absolutely great. So. One change in the middle for Wanderers in the last quarter. Scott Meyer goes back into the ruck, and Damien Williams took him on in the middle. Dre Thompson, can he get the handball off? Well tackled, couldn't quite squeeze it off to Cedric, who is running past. Up by comes in, there's a push, and it's going the Crocs way. Horbury comes up with a football. It's where districts have to. They got absolutely slaughtered out of the middle. Sebastian Priest, who's excellent in that third quarter, has gone to full forward for Wanderers. Barlow's gone forward, over the back to Corbett, Unipingu. Taken down. Schwartz clever. Socket to himself. Sockers again. Schwartz wow. has kicked a wonderful goal. Oh, brilliant play, Bo Schwartz. He looked a to toe at four to McLaughlin, who went past him, but he found that he was the one running onto it and then socketed again from 25 metres out. And just as the Eagles did in the first quarter, a goal inside the first minute of this final term and gives them a little bit of breathing space. 17 points the margin now, lead for the Crocs over the Eagles. He uh, would have had to have played junior footy. This, this little left foot, look, he's on the right. First one's on the right. That's so clever. And the second one's on the left. Yeah. He would have had to have played junior soccer. That's uh, unbelievable. He's a pretty good uh, Australian goalkeeper called Mark Schwartz. And that was Bo Schwartz. Yeah. Both sides. Yeah, it's very impressive. Well, that was just what the Wanderers didn't want. They kicked five goals to none in the third quarter to bring the margin back to 11 points at three-quarter time. The opening goal... Has gone to the Crocs, and now is there a whistle for two? Rebounds because Willie Farrell wasn't in the goal square, I believe. So it's got to come back and we start again. One and a half minutes gone, final quarter. Yeah, he gave it to him, Shannon Motlop, at three quarter time, and so he should have. Absolutely. Tell him, give him a few home truths. See whether you are coaching Sooks or not. See if they can take a good spray because they deserved it. Big leap by Williams. It was a good contest. He comes up with it again. Gives to Tambling. They're away. The Crocs. Tambling kicks up long in the Farrow direction. Sets himself to the back of the pack. Well done by Unipingu. Just got hands to it. Here's the speedy Davin Hall running onto it. Goes out of bounds in the left forward pocket. Better start. Two centre bounces. That's where they were. They were uh, really he badly smashed. beaten is, uh, in the centre bounce. So... They fixed that area all, uh, earlier on in this quarter. Corbett. Tambling. Oh, taking in oh, a oh, strong dang. tackle. Holding the... Well, yeah, holding the man holding in the man. end. And it goes against Brenton Motlop. Richard Tambling will line up for the Crocs' second goal of the quarter. Yeah. Quite There's did, the replay the of that ball. tackle. Oh, dang. Sort of did drop it a bit, but then, you know, they're pretty strict on sling, the slinging now as well, so... So Tambling from 25 metres out directly in front. And that's a tough blow for the Wanderers. Wanderers 7-4-46 now trail by 23 points with two goals inside the first three quarters in this final term. In the first three minutes, I should say, of the final term. Crocs to a handy lead. Yeah, good return. I think, yeah, I think the few home truths had to be told at three-quarter time. You can't give a spray. You can probably spray them twice in a year, I reckon. Any more than that, you're probably going a bit overboard. But I reckon it was the right time for some home truce and uh, it's good that they've uh, they've resolved it the right way you often find out whether you're coaching Sooks and uh, doesn't look like Southern Districts Football Club there's no tears on the football field at the moment there are a bunch of Sooks by the looks of it so that's good that's a good sign for the Southern Districts Club Meyer wins the tap as far as Dyer better pressure on the ball carriers who are so good in the third quarter Sedgwick to die about to be run down by Schwartz he just gets his kick away and as far as Joshua though who takes yeah, a good he's mark. been impressive hasn't he he's a, a good game yeah talented footballer nice left foot kick on him too wonderful spot up out towards Horbury who'd made space on the wing in front of the scoreboard out of side they're running now into Schwartz into McLaughlin McLaughlin's kick wanting core but he's all alone at the back of the pack too easy for the Crocs and they're turning it on early stages last quarter Receive the bake. And now the Crocs are bouncing back with a chance for their fourth goal. I should say third goal. In four minutes, though. Four four minutes. Good, re- good response. It's good. This is what we saw from them within the first two quarters. They kind of disappeared for the third quarter, and now they're back. For a 29-point lead. 
There's Corbett, shoots from the left forward pocket. He's across the face. The margin is 24 points. And Ricky, as we've been talking about, we've seen a few of those missed opportunities within the first couple yeah. of quarters from the Crocs as well. Plenty of time still for the Eagles, but momentum has very rapidly shifted in the Crocs' favour. Brenton Motlop breaks from centre-half back and marks in the left back pocket. Player on short there and O'Connell ignored that. Wants to go longer down the Morris Riola grandstand wing. Off the side of the boot a bit. Priest comes in, third man up. Barlow has the ball knocked away by Sedgwick. Dre Thompson, Unipingu has to step over his teammate. Got the handball cleverly back to Dre Thompson. His kick up towards half forward might have been touched. Bounces off the chest there of Pemberton. Through the legs. White sweats on the footy. Will come to O'Connell. Good shepherd there from Jabaston Priest. Got away from Zach Smith. O'Connell's kick up in the Jarrah direction. Didn't quite make its target. And so it's a mark there to the Crocs. Ball's transferred to Corbett. And he juggles it. And turns it over. Colley. He's got Cabillo there for support. He goes to Cabillo now. Right half forward 70 from goal. They love a quick one here just to get themselves back into it. A trail by four goals. Back into the middle and Dyer. But like we saw in the first half, Crocs are getting numbers back inside defensive 50, making it hard as another Eagles player comes limping off. And that might be Dylan Dos Santos, I think, who came in with his knee heavily strapped. It's got more and more strapping on as the game's gone on. As Dos Santos comes off, a high kick in towards full forward, clears Warwick Williams' head, and will be a mark there to Keegan Dingo. Oh, dangerous kick, but Bowden's up to the task as Sedgwick came in to try and spoil. Fair grab that. They're hard to mark those balls. 15-metre pass straight down the line. Handballs to Tamling. Wow. They're, de they're determined to turn it over in front of goal here, the Crocs, but still they might get away with it as Bowden finally gets the clearing ball to Zach Smith. I might have tick on those blocks. <laughs> Shannon Roscoe must be turning to the back of the box going, what's going on? There's another kick towards the wing, and McLaughlin traps it cleverly, then steps around beautifully, gets away from... Curry Parryman and finds a chest of Schwartz. Schwartz's kick is excellent back in towards centre half forward where the mark is taken by Lake. Lake's kick, the stretching Farrah. O'Connell for Wanderers. Oh, he's almost oh. taken down by Horbury. The big don't argue, but holding the ball. It was determined that Horbury and then a silly play by O'Connell. That'll yep. be 50 metres yep. in frustration. Just nudged the side of Horbury. But Horbury tried to take. O'Connell tried to take Horbury on. He wasn't to be denied. The tackle stuck and then a 50-metre penalty. And the margin now will blow out to 30 points with Horbury brought into the goal square at the airport end. I worry about the petrol tickets that Wanderers... They, as I said, they didn't rotate their mids at all. So I just worry about those petrol tickets that they used. 11th goal for the Crocs. 11-10-76. The Eagles 7-4-46. The Eagles haven't scored so far in the final term. The fat lady might have sung, but maybe a Brandon... Brandon McLean, who went back, I reckon he might be a little bit fresh. Might be an option, but I think the fat lady's getting, uh, is warming the vocal cords up. Eight minutes gone. Still plenty of time, but uh, the momentum having shifted so yeah. greatly, hard to see them getting back into it. As you see Joshua and Dre Thompson there on screen. Five goals in ten minutes in the last quarter. Well, they were heading that way within the third quarter, Wander as well. Sent Jabaston Priest back into the middle, who's so good, and he streaks away with the footy. Just gets a little push, but gets his kick up towards full forward. Meyer comes in from behind, couldn't complete the mark, comes to Ogden. He loops a handball over the top to Holman and taps it back in towards the goal square, either to his teammate or a rush behind. I think he's quite happy with that option, and it's a behind only to the Wanderers. Margin 29 points. It's amazing how just the switch of Priest back into the middle turned their fortunes around. As it comes out towards the wing, tapped forward by Fijo. Got a couple of crocs to beat and a strong tackle there by Riley Owen. Skender sees him out of bounds. Eleven ten seventy six crocs. Eagle seven five forty seven. Leading goal scorers Schwartz, Ed Barlow, and Will Farrow have two each for the crocs. Dre Thompson has front position. A couple of crocs come in to tackle him. Forced through there by oh. Dyer. Back to Thompson, who did well. Ran straight into Schwartz, who's having a good last quarter. And a throw. Well played by Schwartz. 
kicked a wonderful goal in this term and he's laid some very important tackles as well and he squares at the center half back and ogden who kicks out towards the wing got the teammate there in bowden was it smith as the kick comes in towards center half forward to the back of the pack running at it is josiah farrow got rid of his opponent in collie throws it on the left boot and kicks a terrific oh. goal but right on the oh. line corbett went for the mark and <laughs> spilt it bounces off his chest from behind where was the shepherd i reckon josiah farrell by corbett at cordial tonight <laughs> i don't think so Braden mclean marks the unipunia unipunia <laughs> kick in Curry Parryman marks. Out to Sedgwick. To Williams. Better build up by Wanderers. Out wide, very wide to Cabillo, and it's out of bounds. And under no pressure, that's a pretty poor kick. 30 points in it, 10 minutes gone last quarter. I reckon districts will uh, slow the game down a bit, control the ball by foot for the next 10 minutes. Oh, O'Connell there on the bench, giving away that 50 metre penalty. He actually went straight to the bench uh, after that 50 metre penalty as well. I don't know whether that was directed by the coaching staff or not, but as soon as the penalty was given, he was on the bench. Owen Skender up against Stevens. Stevens for Wanderers wins the tap. Joshua tried to take it from the contest, couldn't he? Might get another chance at it. Coming the other way was Sedgwick. Stevens fights on at ground level. Dyer sweating on the footy to come out. Stevens lays a tackle again. Whistle blown. Might be a high tackle. It was going to the Crocs. Kick will Pierce go to little. Pierce Little. Little out towards the wing and Schwartz, who's been very busy tonight. I reckon the districts can do this for a minute or two. Just take a bit of pace off the game. Mm. Control the footy. Moving it slowly down the outer side. Now the kick comes in. Turnover. Collie. Low kick on the bounce, Braden McLean. Sedgwick clever to Dyer. Dyer's underground handball to Meyer, the big man. Can he pick it up? He can, but he's crunching a big tackle by Pierce Little holding the footy. He'll still tackle Pierce, there's no doubt about that. Big man and little man, and little man wins. First game for a very, very long time. Sends it out to Zach Smith. Could have gone to Joshua down the line. He steady goes inboard to Holman. Tries to step around Dos Santos, who's made a wonderful recovery. He's gone for the night. Comes back to Zach Smith. Long to Farah, who gets rid of his man in Jordan Jeffrey and can line up for his third goal. Willie really to really concentrate here. Put this one away. Body language is looking good. He is looking around the touch. Let's run straight at the goals and put it through. He doesn't wonder who he looked inboard again. From 25 metres, 45 degree angle, never in doubt. Straight between the big posts. Farrah has three, joins Wanderers' Mark White with the most goals by an individual in the game. The Crocs have their 12th. 12, 11, 83. They've blown it out to a 36 point lead. Eagles 7 5, 47. And here we were at three quarter time saying the game was in the balance. Yeah. This says you can have lapses in, lapses in footy. It's. They say you can lapse 10%. That can make a massive difference in Australian rules football, and I think that's what happened with districts. It's just felt like a one-quarter game for Wanderers. They really, yeah. they weren't there within the first and second quarter. Showed up, showed up well in the third quarter, and now we're back to that first and second quarter play again. 4-2 to one behind this quarter. Crocodiles over the Eagles. As Joshua comes running into the centre square. Stand alongside Sedgwick, who had a terrific third quarter. Big smash by Meyer out of the middle. Keelan Fijo's gone into the middle. Can't quite take it with him. Has a strong tackle, though. As does Cabillo. Ball's not going anywhere. Tambling will throw it back to the umpire. 55 metres out from the Wanderers' goal. 7-5 plays, 12-11, 14 minutes gone last quarter. Slap inside attacking 50. Oh, neat play by Lake, one way then the other. Stretching there was Joshua. Collie to Sedgwick. Sedgwick for Wanderers. And his kick is turned over straight down the throat of Josiah Farrah. 40 metres out from the goal he's defending. Sends it out in the Charlie McAdam direction. He marks and can go. He's got a player streaming by. Pokes it over the top to Lionel Ogden. Ogden's got 10 metres of space. And he kicks towards half forward. Davin Hall won't quite get to him. Unipingu comes up with it for Wanderers. On the bounce, awkward for Braden McLean. A turnover. Crocs a chance. Hall 
meeting him the other way was Dylan De Santos. Stands up well, gave to Unipingu. Still fighting on his haul. He's in the contest. Still Hall comes up with a footy. Wonderful contested ball and then squares it. Looking for his teammate. Straight down the throat of Collie. And so the turnover out to McLean. Doesn't give up, does he, Hall? Uh, he's second and third efforts are excellent. Cabillo didn't take it with him. Comes to Horbury. High tackle by Meyer. No doubt about that one. No real malice. Just the smaller man being coat hangered as the big man came in to lay an aggressive tackle. Pemberton. Well done by Derek. Chop the arms though. Pemberton play on the call. Kicks in towards the pocket. And Farrah marks. We saw him kick a goal from this angle a couple of minutes ago. This is a much further out, obviously. He'll kick from about 50, just inside, potentially, for his fourth goal of the night. Margin is 36. 16 minutes gone. Final quarter. To consolidate second spot on the NTFL ladder behind Nycliffe. The beaten grand finalist of last season has kicked it right across the face of goal. Williams came in from the side. Some hanging on happening, and I think it might be a Crocs free kick. You know, Pingo's got hands on his knees as if the Wanderers are the offending team. They're both Schwartz, maybe. So Schwartz, who kicked that wonderful soccer goal in the opening minute of this final quarter. No, Horsbury, maybe. Usually you've got three players trying to claim that ball. <laughs> both Schwartz. <laughs> Schwartz it is to line up for his third goal of the night. Kick one of the most impressive goals of uh, Shannon Rioli. I've seen him use really good soccer skills. He's pretty good below, but that was unbelievable by Schwartz's goal. That was an easy one. Gets his third, and the Crocs racing away. 13-11-89. They lead by 42 points. The Eagles 7-5-47. It's one thing of the round ball, but to control it that well, oh, mm. an oval shape. Uh, the, other, the thing that I was amazed at is both feet. He controlled it perfectly with his right, and went to his left and put it straight through the middle from about 25 out. It's been a five goal to none final quarter after the Wanderers kicked five goals to none yeah, in the second. The second. But the damage was done up to half time. It was a 39 point lead to Southern Districts at half time. And they've extended that to 42 points, closing in on full time here at TIO Stadium. Meyer back in the middle, up against Josiah Farrah. Had four different ruckmen tonight, the Crocs. Farrah has a bounce. Still got some energy. His high kick looking for Will. He's caught behind. Well played by Jordan Jeffrey with a big fist. Punches it back towards the goal square and through for a rush behind. Well, it's good by Jordan Jeffrey because I've seen Farrah do that twice tonight where he usually uses the body and gets the ball instead. Josiah Farrah best on ground, I think, tonight. Didn't have, didn't have a real good third quarter, but he had 21 mates as well. Colley kicks to Meyer. He's got a couple to beat. Meyer goes again. Gets off to his teammate there in Dyer. Sedgwick. That pair combining brilliantly in the third quarter. Sedgwick about to be run down. Gets the quick kick over the head of Bowden. Coming through there was White. Crocs clear it back towards the wing. Well played by Cabillo into the path of Dyer. One way, then the other. Evades Horbury. Pokes into the Williams direction. He marks in the forward pocket. Kicks it further afield. Spoiled away from Stevens. And the ball is out of bounds. 20 metres around from the Wanderers goal. That was Holman doing the spoiling work then. Did a pretty good job. Holman slowly getting into it. One of the best centre-half backs in the Goulburn Valley. Plays for Clabram. I think they've lost one game in three years. He's not used to losing. And uh, pretty good pickup, but I just think he's improved. He's a big guy, he's improving every week he plays. Dingo finds himself in ruck and wins the tap against Stevens. Oh, Duffy got the high. kick. McLean went up far too early, and so it'll be a free kick to Damien Williams back on the wing, edge of the centre square. 19 minutes gone, final term. Southern Districts have broken it open in the final quarter. They led by just 11 points at three-quarter time. They lead by 43 points as the kick comes into Duffy. Holman calls for it. He marks it centre-half forward. Gives to Ogden. Runs to 50. Pokes the little kick. Down the throat of Davin Hall, who can line up for his second goal. Another one out of a few Mosquito Fleet districts that have played well tonight. 
Devin Hall and his mate. He was the, uh, Michael Joshua. Michael Joshua. Played very good games. Hall, lovely laconic kicking technique, but he's hooked the kick across the face from behind only. The margin is 44 points. Dyer marks the kick in. Dylan De Santos to Sedgwick. Opens up a little bit for Wanderers across half back. To Warwick Williams. It's been an okay target at times. Good size. Could have put more of a stamp on the contest. Williams on the outer wing. Kicks up towards centre half forward. Jara pushed out of the footy by Riley Owen Skender, who takes a good mark at centre half back. And he's got Lionel Ogden all alone on the wing. He can kick to Joshua further wide if he wants to. Still on for him is Joshua. No one's coming at Ogden, so he has a bounce. He runs to 60 metres, had it a long time. And a lovely weighted ball to Farrow, who drops oh. the mark. Well, he did everything right then. Both players, really, found the space as O'Connell bounces his way from centre-half back. Threw some traffic there. Had to step around Lake and kicks towards centre-half forward. Clever nudge by Holman, but to the back of the pack, Cabillo throws the ball into his boots. And it trails away into the right forward pocket and out of bounds. Watching Cedric's running patterns for the last uh, minute or two. He's extremely fit. He's got running capacity not, not as good as Jack Geary, but nearly as good as Jack Geary. He's uh, very impressive in the last minutes of the game to be, uh, to be running that hard. They get a consolation goal, the Eagles. They were brave in the third quarter. But that effort has proven to be too much. The margin's gone out to 44 points after they trailed by 39 at half time. Owen Skender up against Stevens. Bowden's high kick back towards the middle. Meyer running back with it, takes it. Plays on by hand to Dyer to centre half forward. 60 out, clever kick. Just switched it back in board to the chest of O'Connell, 20 metres away. We should mention as well today the Rioli family playing a thousand mm. games for the St Mary's Football Club. What a magnificent effort by that family. Saints having a good win. Got a very good record of winning games in milestones. So, good day for the club and a very special day for the Rioli family. Bo O'Connell's tried hard all night for Wanderers for his first goal of the night. It'll test him. He'll kick from 50 metres out. Gives it everything. And does he drive it home? He does! Cleared the pack on the goal line. And well-deserved Bo O'Connell. Well-deserved Wanderers. They're going to suffer a pretty big defeat in the end. But they gave us some entertainment in the third term. The Crocs have proven too strong. 22 minutes gone, final quarter. Eagles get their eighth goal, their first of the last quarter. And the margin is 13-13 to 8-5, 38 points. It's going to be a very interesting round next week. Southern Districts up against Nightcliffe. 1-2 grand final replay. And uh, Waratah up against Wanderers. And I believe they'll be sitting uh, around 6-7 and seven on the ladder as well. So more equally matched games for these two teams next week. But the uh, one to watch is certainly going to be Southern Districts versus Nightcliffe. We play the Buffaloes out on the islands. Mm -hmm. if if Cyril's going to have yeah, another run. Interesting, yeah. Meyer. Didn't play again today. Big tap. And as far as Davin Hall, who gathered it neatly to Duffy. He's had a few touches in this final quarter. Kicks in the Josiah Farrow direction. Well done by Dylan DeSantos, who wouldn't be denied front position. Sockers off the ground. Meyer stands his ground. Sockers at the Sedgwick. Closing quickly, there's McAdam. Gave to Dre Thompson. Well played by McAdam. He's tackled two of them. Back to Sedgwick. Play goes on. Still Wanderers have control of the footy through Braden McLean. Being forced backwards, though. And the ball is into the arms of Dre Thompson on the outer wing. Shouldn't laugh, but I've seen it a bit in footy. As DeSantos is in the middle of the ground cramping. And you can't get your toes. It's a very painful thing. I've seen it a few times. <laughs> Dyer looks for Jara over his head through the fingertips of... Keegan Dingo, Pemberton for the Crocs. Now McLaughlin's high kick out of the danger zone. In front there was Joshua. Oh, well played, Matthew Motlop. Little backhander to himself. Centering ball is excellent. Yellow jumpers everywhere. And they might get another late goal through Cabillo. One of the funniest things I ever saw in football was over two at Morara. Guy was on the, uh, the running track side, the far side of... Uh, and he was cramping. <laughs> And uh, he couldn't get to his toes, and no one would go near him because the plovers were attacking him. Oh, no. <laughs> so this poor bloke's cramping. Plovers are absolutely going at him. No runner, no one would go over and help him. His teammates wouldn't help him. Cabillo from 40 metres out, and he kicks towards goal. It's not going to have the carry. It so might that. be a mark on the goal line to uh, 
Crocs player, is it? No, Who, I reckon no? it's Kane it's, Stevens. It is Kate Stevens has taken the mark. And he'll have a shot for goal. The final siren sounds. It won't be for a win, unfortunately. The umpire will move him around to about a 45 degree angle, you would think. Or is he too no, tired to do that? Front there. Anyway, I thought he marked it outside the square. He kicks the last goal of the night. Last goal doesn't win in this case, but at least the Eagles get a semblance of respectability. 9 5 59. The margin in the end was 32 points. The Crocs 13 13 91. Quick wrap, Ricky. Uh, good to see the Crocs, the Crocs bounce back after a very poor third quarter and a serve from the coach. There was impressive signs once again when you touched on Ricky in the third quarter there from Wanderers as well. I mean, we were always sceptical going into this game, but it was one quarter of footy. I feel like if Wanderers could have put that together for the other three quarters, it would have been a much more exciting game, but still had glimpses. Uh, but you're yeah, very much looking forward next week to seeing Southern Districts that performance today go up against the Premiers in Nightcliff. That is full-time here at TIO Stadium. Once again, Southern Districts 13-13-91, defeating Wanderers 9-5-59. We'll catch you again next week. For when the heavens open and the winds howl, we're here for when the water just won't stop. We're here for the wet and we're here for the dry. We're here because we know there's nowhere else you'd rather be. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be either. TIO Home Insurance. We're for Territorians. Absolutely zero. Zero. Yeah, definitely. It has to be zero. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I don't think that's asking too much.